everybody and welcome back to Wappleville and I guess we're gonna head to the grim dark future where you've got orcs flying around on death copters yes we were able to dig out I think it was four of these might be five I think it was four of these hey armored wolf how are you doing huh, maybe it was five I can't remember which but we got more than one and it's nice to have this guy and we did this base last night and we were utilizing some of those uh, our 3d printing leftover supports right there which was kind of fun to be able to do that so armor wolf the dice bags were looking really sensational really really fantastic i mean well was, there is no way to pick a favorite because they really are all so sensational but what we're going to do is i think we're going to go with ye old uh, bad moon core at least as much as we can see what happens with that because that'll let us do some some fun weathering and you know all that kind of stuff bad moon whatever and then here we're gonna have uh, lots of nice nifty weathering on this it's this is not exactly gonna be mind-boggling here to paint it's just a whole lot of rubble and such things frozen toes how you doing welcome back yep I just wanted to <clears throat> at least hit this guy right here uh, we'll we'll see if we can actually get him on his basic I think I might not actually put a whole bunch of paint on these things. I just threw some quick acrylic paint down there just so that it would be dry and I could maybe have something to grab onto and just stick him on the base here. And then maybe we could finish that off. So yeah, that's that was the idea here is just maybe not a whole lot of paint down in this bottom area so that I can actually have somewhere to grab onto this, maybe actually get a chance to glue that on there. Now I'm going to quickly here grab one of these guys. And we're just going to make sure we have no paint on there so that when we anchor, or that's primer, not paint. Probably have to do that again too once the once we're done with the paint process, but there you go. I'm having a good Friday. Most have recovered from the vax and have the day off and about to order pizza. Ah, frozen toes. I think, uh, boy, everybody's talking about pizza today. It's really getting me in that pizza frame of mind, that's for sure. Now, more pizza, more better, right? More pizza, more better. This is going to be, for now, all we've got. Opaque alley up here is just the the off-white, or sorry. <laughs> I'm not actually putting the off-white yellow out here just yet. Because i got Indian yellow sitting over here. So that's just a quick dry white. Cadmium white, or cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow deep. And, of course, Terra Rosa. Ah, that's what, that's what didn't get out here. We need to get some asphaltum out there. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be really tough to do our weathering. So we're just going to throw a little bit of asphaltum out there, like so. Let's get a little bit of our that. So I've been mostly just working stuff out of the tubes lately. I mean, it, it, now this section, I did make tubes of these two, the perline black and our Indian yellow. So we actually do have tubes of those. Over here, pretty much the usual, right? Your Van Dyke Brown, Indigo, Umber. Now, this is the Black Spinel. That's the new one. Over here, you got your Prussian Blue. There, you got your Perlene Black. And there's your Indian Yellow. And we used it on this. This is one of our later videos, right? Our latest videos. Lord Dave, how are you doing? I saw your post there. That was looking really good. So, they, uh, the Ali fonts, uh, they just keep charging ahead, right? Getting more and more towards that completion so that you're all good to go here let's uh start to throw some of our pre-glazes on here shall we how's about a little bit of our uh van dyke brown now most of, actually all this stuff is pretty darn absorbent right here so we got that plaster piece the here's those uh 3d support sprues right as a welcome in grumdy and riff can riff can geez riff can how you doing nice to see you again I hope everybody had a decent Friday. We know that the Frozen Toes is in recovery mode, but is also about to enter pizza mode, and pizza mode is a good mode for sure, no doubt about that. Well, so is a la mode. Um, that's always good too. Nothing wrong with a la mode. So, Grumdy, I hope that you're having a decent day too. Yeah, I'm just going to chunk a little bit more into that. And let's keep going here with our base. It's uh, not going to be super complicated right here. I'll tell you that for sure. 
Uh, not lots of brush time with the long week at work. Uh, sorry to hear that, Lord Dave. I mean, obviously, yeah, that just uh, that just has a way of happening, doesn't it? It just has a way of sneaking in there or just kicking in the door, Kool-Aid man style, and just demanding all the time. That's for sure. Uh, what are you, how are you doing? And uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. You can always uh, give me a little bit of a guide or something like that as far as screen name pronunciation goes. If I have a chunk that, as we got Angraham and Scooter also in the house. Ah, Grundy's going to be able to get painting this weekend. Oh, and uh, they expect you to work sometime. That is uh, it's a very archaic custom, much like sleeping. I don't understand either of those customs. So this video right now is rendering. This is what's rendering right now. And this is the Loot Studio 72 mil fig that we did all the wood grains on the skin and stuff. So that is what's rendering right now. That is going to get... Uh, after we're done here, that is going to start uploading. So before the Saturday session, that should be out there for people to be able to watch. Uh, let's see. Hey, Hunk Guts, welcome back. Welcome back. So yeah, as Armored Wolf always says, there's no sleep in Wappleville. That is an archaic custom that... We stopped believing it many years ago. I mean, all it leads to is drooling and bad hair. So we we refuse to submit to such things. So, Angriam, I hope that you're doing good too. Oh, thanks, uh, Grumdy. That's uh, that was really fun. I have to tell you, and there's so many other really fun files out there. Oh my gosh, it's uh. I have to try and get some of the arch villain ones transferred, and I think tonight, um, amongst many many other things, this could be mostly an all nighter tonight. I'm gonna be transferring a bunch of those files and trying to set up a whole bunch of build plates, so that we can get some more of that stuff printed. Here, we're just gonna throw some of the asphaltum in here. Again, where it's really rough, we're gonna use more of the thinner because. It's super absorbent. It's going to just soak in there. Actually, we're doing that same thing on the wood nymph, too. Ah, hook cuts. You're able to catch up on the... It's pretty wild. Uh, I was disappointed that I didn't get the photos of all the lizard stuff that we did with all the armored wolf grass tufts and such. But that was... Uh, gosh, I think we were using those for probably a couple hours or something like that, it seemed like, right? That was the most foliage style stuff that we've ever done with the basing so don't be surprised if you see that kind of thing happen more often where we're doing a bunch of snow or a bunch of ice or just a whole bunch of bases because uh, there's no way I'll be able to fit all that in a one basing video right because that's hours and hours of just doing the same thing so that's something I'll just be ready for that on Thursdays as we welcome in Melev. How you doing, Melev? Nice to see you again. And folks, I'm sure you're, well, if you're awake at this time, you're already following Melev. But be sure to just double check because Twitch is twitchy, right? Twitch is twitchy. So you wonder what the heck is he doing right now? What is he doing? What is this thing? This is actually a base that we made for, look at this, an old... Or, uh, orc def copter here. Yes, I actually dug one of these out, found out where it was. We're using our oil paints. We we're getting all set up to be able to start wiping away some paint with our sponges over here. Ah, Prometheus, uh, yes, uh, let's see. Who enters my domain? And look who else has returned. It's Earth Man Brick. Well, Actually, it's it's very uh, also too, folks. Be sure to give Earthman Brick that follow, right? Uh, we want to support all of our fellow streamers. That's the cool thing about Twitch, right? That is the really excellent thing about it. So, Malev, uh, yeah, this is a really fortuitous moment because we're literally just getting underway here. 
So I'm actually going to throw a little bit more of our Van Dyke Brown out here on the palette. Let's just get some minutes from uh, Gamlin here. Yeah, let's get you more out there because we're going to also need it on our orc. And this is something that we call the pre-glaze here. Essentially what we're going to do is almost create, for all intents and purposes, a nice little active, nice little active, uh, shall we say, I, I hate using the words, such as things like, uh, you know, your, what is that, your uh, xenothal, right? I hate using that word because people think, oh, xenothal, it's black and white. It's no. There's actually a whole bunch of colors here. You can't see them just yet, but you're going to see them when we start wiping this away. And we're almost there. We are almost to that point. By the way, yes, that is just 3D support sprues right there or uh, 3D supports. Not kidding, because they came from this. They came from this, so you can see how tall this is. So that yielded some really tall 3D support sprues right there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Spurs Hub, how are you doing? And welcome in. Let's see, Lord Dave Painter. Quick little uh, diorama last night. That was the uh, thing that you put up on, uh, that's what I saw, right? Up on Instagram there. Uh, let's see, I was do, 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 do. find myself enjoying acrylics a bit less. Yes, I have to tell you, well, I mean, just like, well, all this recent stuff like this right here, this was so much easier with the oils than it was with the acrylics. This is not getting done in the same time frame if I did this with acrylics as it was with the oils. And again, this is the most recent tutorial video that we just did. Now... Typically what we do here on Thursdays, as in last night, is do sculpting and or basing streams. So we were basing this last night. We're also basing a couple of other things, like a couple of tree beards. Yeah, we were doing that. We'll probably paint some of those tomorrow. But a typical kind of a basing stream involves something like, well, this, right? So this was based on a Thursday, and then we painted it on a Saturday. So all those dwarf elements right there those were all 3d printed and the base was built with cork and some uh a, a sculpey texture a green stuff world texture roller using sculpey to create that dwarf floor right there and that's part of our moria army right here which you can see a little bit more of well right here there's the rest of the army so that's the kind of stuff that we like to paint on our saturday challenges So here, let's do uh, let's do some wiping away. Let's start wiping this away. See how kind of enough of it stays behind that it basically tints this. So this is mostly Sculpey right here. Probably 90% of this is Sculpey. But I think as we start wiping this away, you can already see some of that shading begin to emerge. But unlike your prime Zenithal, which is just dead, right? Because it's dry, you can't do nothing with it. This right here, we can mix new colors into this, blend stuff. It, that's why I call it an active Zenithal. Now, I'm going to try not to uh, break some of these things off here. These are just simple makeup sponges. That's all they are. Nothing more than makeup sponges. So you can see as we wipe this away, some of that stays behind. And in some areas, it's a little bit more bluish, a little bit more brown, depending on whether we're using the asphaltum, the Van Dyke brown, the umber. Now, the plaster is super absorbent. It's probably the most absorbent material on here. Right? See, I've got a little area in there we can hit again. Just make sure we got that. We have... Obviously, different sizes of sponges here, too, so that we can get in here and take some of this away where we need to. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Spurs Hub. Uh, uh, pr uh, Promestes, uh, they don't really... They tend to leave a lot of junk behind. These do not. These are... Uh, I forget what they are. I've got the package somewhere around. Let me see if I can dig the... Ah, here's the package. Now, so these are latex-free 
these don't crumble. Um, I tried in the early days, years ago, tried to use Q-tips because we had a bunch of them. That was mostly unsuccessful because they leave a lot of junk behind. And you'll go through about a thousand of them. And they also are not, like here, I cut up the makeup sponges. They bit, they're basically like little brushes at this point. So yeah, Shinobi, the, uh, the oils are no messier than acrylics. Actually, the acrylics are much messier because they just dry on everything. So yeah, actually, the uh, to me, the acrylics are definitely messier because, well, you're, you're screwing around with wet palettes and all that other sort of stuff. So yes, I definitely, uh, for me, the oils, well, not only do they cut down the painting time by about 75%, they actually do cut down on things like the mess, and of course, as far as so say right here. So say ah, thank you so much, Ben. I appreciate that. I could use this right here. That's just that just that drop right there. There we go. Ah, nice little sip of that. Yeah, like Hawkgood says, you're going to get a whole lot of uh, lots of nasty stuff stuck in there. So here's the the uh, so for dried acrylic and you know, uh, no vapor not hazardous nothing like that. so you don't need a whole bunch of nasty solvents and as far as thinner goes this is just a tiny bit of high quality odorless thinner that's it this is days worth for me as in three four five days worth not kidding so what i typically do is i'll take my my oils just from the tube we'll put them into something like a blister pack like this squeeze the oils in there we take the high quality thinner and then we just keep thinning it till it's about the quant uh, consistency of regular miniature paint so whether it's reaper paint blue whatever the heck it is it's about that consistency now for me i'm just working more out of the tube lately because well i've been using oils for almost 40 years so i i got kind of a solid handle on them and i just i have a way of essentially kind of getting around that process of making the the little jars i still make the jars so that i actually have them for people to see uh look at that so and you can see it's kind of stained that color a little bit right so thanks again ben and uh you like the uh -huh. oh i like pie loves daca well we like pie here too we definitely like pie so the Brands that you'll see me use in here are going to be mostly these three. So Windsor Newton, Williamsburg, and Gamlin. However, I did start for the first three years of me painting miniatures with oils. I just had one of these. This is just the Winton starter set. And then I added to it. I just started adding to it. Now, these are the most expensive paints that I have because this is the highest quality stuff that I've got. But you don't necessarily, especially starting out, you don't necessarily have to have that. Hey, Queez, how are you doing? Here, let's, uh, yeah, I'll take a little bit more of this away just for funsies right here. Uh, let, let me see. So what is your throne on? Uh, so there was a little bit more dilution here, Earthman, because this texture is so rough. Now, of course, it depends on the miniature you're working on, right? So the preglaze was very different for our Thousand Suns. This was a little bit more like what you just saw because, well, even though I was doing this gold armor, everything had all this, this kind of turquoise green, right? So take a look at the armor and see how the, all that reflection on there. I just let the, the green get everywhere on the skin, on the hair, on the blades, all the stuff. Whereas here, it was a little bit more selective. And then, of course, when we're doing something like our object source lighting here, it's going to get even more selective. And this was done probably in about three stages or so, whereas this was just kind of one, just boom, like so. This was just a little bit different here. Hey, pun expected, how are you doing? Uh, I'm just going to get caught up on here. Let me see. Ah, Hot Guts has some oils coming. That's great. That is fantastic. So here again, very different with the preglaze because we had a couple of object source lighting. And then, of course, we, we did our freehander. All this stuff done with oils, wet into wet. So for folks that are new to the channel here, 
You can go back and watch all the highlights. You can watch this one too. They are all saved. It's like a YouTube channel, just minus the commercials. Now here's another one again. The pre-glaze very different on Schmandoff over here because, well, whole different color scheme, right? So every every miniature is different depending on what you're looking to do. Oh, thanks, Earthman Break. Well, he's got his eye on you. That's what he's he's keeping an eye on you, right? Just like here with our Osiarchs and you know, using the interference colors. That was really fun. But again, another difference in the way we did the pre-glaze. So let me just get caught up on some of this. So, Quiz, I hope that you're doing well. And say hi to Megan for me, too. And I think we're caught up. So, yeah. Here, let's start bringing in some of our lighter tones. And this is the other important thing with the oils. Less is more, more is with. That's literally how much paint is on that brush. But it's not a dry brush. You can see it's mixing. Look at that darker color that's already on the paintbrush. You can see how it's mixing on here. This is why we say this is an active zenithal here. Because Look at that's mixing. Uh, it's all mixing there, which is very nice. We're going to do the same here, too. But again, that's minimal amounts of paint. You, sl you pile the paint on here. Well, first of all, it's going to take a long time to dry. For me, anywhere between 8 to 12 hours is usually enough. Depends on the color. Sometimes it'll be more. Here, I'm going to try and get a couple of streaks in here, too. Here, let's get something going here on the... Uh, that was a Green Stuff World mold, and I actually threw some plaster in there to get that. Ah, Daniel Smith. Yeah, there's uh, was it Michael Harding is the other one I think that people are talking about all the time. Yeah, I think it's Michael Harding is the other one. So again, look at how that's mixing. Got to come back over here. Got to get some more. Can only get a couple of brush strokes out of it, and it is very much a dry brush sort of a texture here. We're also speaking of dry brush, and we're going to be brushing over this with some darker tones too. And like I said, you can go back and watch last night's episode because that's where this was based. I strongly suggest checking that out because, well, first of all, it was a whole lot of fun. Second of all, I think you'll get yourself a whole lot of uh, tips out of it as well. Oh, thanks, thanks, Earthman Brick. So hopefully you've been doing good. Uh, actually, Earthman Brick... And uh, and Malev, have you got any uh, Instagram links, you know, stuff, uh, work in progress? I know you both just finished your stream, so you don't have pictures of what you were just working on. But if you do have some Instagram work in progress things, feel free to shoot those into the chat there. A little more over here. And I used, yes, I used the exact same brushes for acrylics and oils, as in the same ones, because I just was using this for acrylics yesterday. And all the brushes that you see me using here, they were just literally used for acrylics in the last two days. Uh, let's see. Hey, Bun Hum, welcome back. Nice to see you again. Let's see, Honkas has a big order of oils. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, we got that one. Ah, here we go. So Malev just posted a link. So everybody, please go check out that link that Malev just posted there. Now it's time for a wee spot of some, again, dry brush. Even though it's all mixing here, still, it's a dry brush. Just because the Paint on, on this is relatively dry. It doesn't mean that this paint is not. So look at that. See, we're starting to stain this here, get a little bit of an explosive look here. Then we're going to come in here with some rust. We got Terra Rosa and Asphaltum handy. And the, here, the Terra Rosa and Asphaltum are very handy for doing rust like so. And here's another, ah, here's another one of our uh, vehicles right there. So again, the, the rust and all of the... Uh, your corrosion and such, very handy to have things like asphaltum and terra rosa. We'll also hit our casings too, just to make sure those guys get some color on them too. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, may live. Uh, geez, you'll have to send me uh, an Instagram, a picture on Instagram or something of that. All right, here, let's uh, not just darken this down, but let's start thinking about some streaks here. Like so. Maybe we could even use a, yeah, let's grab a somewhat smaller one here. Ah, Lord Dave, thank you very much for the bits. Is that's appreciated. Let's just uh, get that down here. Yep. So, Lord Dave, this is a what well, a flying base that we made last night. Big chunks of Sculpey. Here's actually uh, some parts of it. I'll just keep this out here. So, yeah, we made this whole thing out of our Sculpey clay, and it's just sitting. Ah, here it is. Yeah. It's just sitting on one of the old style flying bases right here. And then this is the uh some uh supports from a 3D print. Oh look at that, huh? Nice and easy with the oils doing all this lovely streaking and such, yes. Uh, let's see. Ah, Malev's gonna go get some food. That's a that is a superior idea. I Definitely am in favor of getting food at any time. So here we're going to try and do a little bit more of our streaking here. And let's grab something that we can use as a blending brush here. So we'll just uh, come back in here and we'll soften those up even more. We could even... Do something like this right here. Can even have some of the DACA. Again, more so DACA, more are. better, right? So uh, Armored Wolf, Lucky 13. Look at that, Lucky 13 for Armored Wolf. Thank you so much. We're just going to let a couple of those splash down in there. And Sammy Poo, thank you. So say we all. So say we all. Thank you very much, Sammy Poo. That is appreciated. So, Sammy Poo, happy Friday, all that good stuff. You know the drill. Hopefully you got lots of fun things planned for the weekend. Hopefully lots of painting planned for the weekend. Because, you know, painting, weekend, painting, miniatures, all that good stuff. Okay, let's do some street. Not so much on these bits, because basically this is what's been basically smashed right off the wall here by our Def Copter. Yeah, Lord Dave, it was part of uh, this thing right here. I've done a couple of really tall 3D prints lately. So I had some super tall supports. And <laughs> the thing is, though, you have to remember to cure them. You have to remember to cure them. And you got to, this is funny, you have to support the supports while you're curing it. Not kidding. You literally have to support your supports, which is weird, but you got to do it. All right, let's start doing a little bit of rust down here too. How about we do something like that? Ah, Monkey Ninja is back. So yeah, Monkey Ninja. I just I couldn't resist. Could not resist. I had to do it. It was just too good of an opportunity to pass up. Alright, so we got the Terra Rosa. Absolutely love using that as a rust color here. And once again we're just sort of dry brushing that on. Let's get some more of that over here, too. Terra Rosa, a little bit of asphaltum thrown in there, too. And it's also mixing with what is here. It's also mixing with our pre-glaze, mixing with the pre-glaze. It's, uh, it's the song that just is topping the charts here in the 2020s. More of our rust over here, too. Hey, Valfara. So the power supply is in. The printer might work again. Ah, uh, Valfair, I was uh, I was a little bit worried when we didn't see you last night for the basing stream. That maybe uh, the the printer was still going haywire. And then of course you had like a whole bunch of bad Monday things happen. So I was hoping that you weren't dealing with more fallout from from the Monday craziness there. Yep, so uh, Valfera, you'll have to go back and watch last night's stream where we were using, yes, we are using, we actually made uh, casings out of them too. 
Of course, now I remember exactly where the uh, secret weapon shell casings are, those pewter ones. But uh, we just showed how to use uh, repurpose printing sprues or, or printing st uh, supports here. Because, well, I have lots of them now. Actually, oh, I just printed out uh, something from the printing goes ever on. It's a 72 millimeter figure. It's gigantic, and there was really heavy supports on it. So those should. I'm actually uh, making sure that those get. Uh, you know, let's uh, do this in a little bit more of a glazy type way. And get a different brush. Here. Ah, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. So let's do a little bit more of a glaze here again with our Terra Rosa. Using a bit more of our thinner here. This is going to be more of a pin line wash on on this little device right here. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, a uh, snazzle. There's no uh, no commands here. Sorry. So. Uh, Yep, yeah, sorry about that. Don't uh, do not have any commands here. Let's ah uh, uh, look at there we go. So now we're starting to get our our rust working in here. We'll maybe do a bit more light tones now in the outer reaches of this. Where's our? Here it is. Let's get our. Terra Rosa here. We will let a little bit of the cadmium yellow work its way into there so that we have some lighter rust colors here just so that it separates a bit. There we go. Look at that. It's starting to separate now. Yep, Sammy Poot. Now, different companies do support differently, so they're not always going to look like this. And they, they take different forms. Uh, some of them look more like fans. And some of them look more like girders like this. So And sometimes even by the same company, they'll have different supports depending on what it is they're trying to support. But sometimes you just you have a few like this that really, really do the trick. And yeah, look at that. And I've got tons of them. I mean... I'm paying for the resin anyways, so might as well use it. And I've got tons of orcs. I, I mean, literally tons of orcs. So you might see more orc basing going on on the Thursday streams for a while just so that we can work our way through through some of these. Uh... <laughs> I, I'm telling you, you're going to see an awful lot of blasted concrete bases for the orkies. That's for sure. All right, there we go. Now, this same Sculpey, same Sculpey, same idea here. Let's get down to our Witch King. You can also watch this one here. One second, let me get down to it. Here we are. Here's our Witch King. So that flying base, that is entirely made of Sculpey. Those are individual bricks. Now, I actually did a basing video on that, but we did paint the Witch King, and we painted the base here on the stream. And the whole idea of that is see how the the fell beast is sort of knocking part of the wall down onto poor George, the uh, Gondolorian shopping mall guard right there. That's the same idea with here. So he's breaking away the the, the concrete wall, but there's also a uh, uh, embedded inside is a here. Let me get back up to my thing here so you can see the pin. So there's actually a pin that's embedded all the way into this wall. It comes through here. And I think you can see the holes right there. So the holes are going to go right there. And that's going to sit on here. Like, and I guess, uh, like I said, all you have to do is go back to uh, last night and you can watch the basing session where we did all of that fun stuff. E-Tool, how are you doing? An orc zoologist. I think we're all caught up there. So, Orgzoologist, I hope that you're doing good. Glad that you were able to catch us here tonight. Now, again, I'm just going to go with some... Like that's a little bit of the cadmium yellow that's working its way in there, just to, to lighten it up a bit. Terros is a fantastic color. Even by itself, has a lot of opacity. 
Boy, again, less is more as far as the paint goes. And you notice we're not doing the whole thing with that lighter wrist coat. We're just doing parts of it, right? That's it. Just parts of it. Going to get a couple of things back here. And then we're going to see if we can't get some lighter rust color down in there too. Mostly we'll just uh, do some of our pin line, pin line washer. That's something you could really do so easily with the oils. You think contrast paints have capillary action? <laughs> pales in comparison to the oil paints. Yeah, Etool, this was really a blast. We also were basing a, a couple of our tree beard figures. But we were also doing a whole bunch of stuff with grass tufts, with the, the foliage. Oh my gosh. I think the first hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes was just a whole bunch of grass tufts and flower tufts and the the vellum plants from Wicked Elf, the new uh, all the new tufts from Armored Wolf that we were trying out. So see again, we're getting a little bit of rust work in here. Can do a couple of rust streaks even onto the well. What uh, we'll just call it concrete surface there. Let's see if we can do a couple little. Things here for our casings. Then we're going to hit them, I think, with some some of our umber here. Like so. And then we'll lighten those guys up. Gets maybe some... A couple of lighter... Rust tones in around here. Let's see if we can do that with our light rust color here. It's, again, it's going to have to be very much a pin line wash here. Uh, Abadoo is going to be playing with the gold powder. Uh, Abadoo, that's uh, I'm looking forward to. I don't know if I'll get a chance to make that video this week, but probably next week I'll be trying to make the video with the the different interference powders mixed with the linseed oil and see what happens. So let me know what you get there, Abadu. Ah, Ito, I'm glad that uh, glad these will be useful for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, like, I guess you can have them in Warcry now, too. Well, you can have all... I guess you can have all of the Sigmar stuff now in Warcry. I don't know how many different choices you have, if it's a little bit more limited when it comes to things like that, but uh, look at that. See, look, at we can have it uh, kind of spill out over there. So again, that was a, a plaster cast. That's from Green Stuff World. It'll give me a bit uh, the lightest rust color down there. Ah, uh, let's see. Greybeard's Den. A purchase sculpting just waiting for the rollers to arrive from Green Stuff World. Ah, for your Cursed City stuff. Ah. Now, was there a certain texture that you picked? Because, man, the... I mean, those are so many different textures, right? With those, uh, it's hard to choose. So, uh, which one did you choose? Ah, uh, you mixed it with the Asphaltum. Okay. So, yeah, the... Uh, it can be, definitely for sure. Uh, that powder, you think oils gets uh, somewhere? That that powder really does get everywhere, doesn't it? It can get a little nuts with the powder. That That's why I've kind of... I, I just wish that I had known it was going to kind of do that from the get-go. Because I would have just had those, uh, those containers ready that I'm using now instead of trying to use uh, smaller containers. All right, so I think now we've got that fairly well. Rust it up. Let's see if we can't also now do something here with our wee little shell casings here. I'm going to take the cadmium yellow light, mix it with the white here, and try and give these a little bit of a glint to them. 
Again, I can only do so many brush strokes with it before I have to come back over here and get some new paint. So I can basically do one or two brush strokes. That's about it. Come back, get some more. Another brush stroke right there. And then, of course, we always have a, a blending brush on hand. Oh, she was there in 90s. That's, uh, that is definitely <laughs> E-Tool. That is really retro. That is very much retro. But it's kind of neat, right, to see sometimes the oldest stuff actually get a brand new treatment like that. All right, Earthman Brick, thank you so much for the raid. Thanks for hanging out. And, folks, be sure again to give Earthman Brick. Be sure to give Earthman Brick a follow so that we support all of our fellow streamers. Yes, indeed. Now we're going to go dark on the other side of that to, again, give us the impression of a shell casing, even though it's not in that shape. Right there. Also, I have to get some dark on the front of these casings to also give them the appearance that, well, they're sort of hollow on the inside, too. So, again, that's the same stuff as up here. We just turned it into shell casings. We just turned it into shell cases, which is, uh, ah, that's so fun. Now, I'm going to see if I can't get a couple of little glints of white here. It sort of takes me back to the old days of 40K when I used to just use uh, paper clips. Yeah, I used to just use pieces of paper clip for that. Get the final light highlights or so. Now we've got our shell case things there. Maybe we start to think about accentuating a little bit of our wall here. Not too much, just, just a smidge here and there, right? Might even bring out a smaller brush for that. Uh, TC Minis, no, when it comes out rubbery and bendy. Uh, TC Minis, a uh, couple of questions. First of all is which type of Sculpey is it? Because some of them just are more that way. That's why we like the white Sculpey or the gray extra firm. Another thing, too, is are you baking it on a cookie sheet or are you baking it on a ceramic tile? Because, as always, we want it to be baked on a ceramic tile because the cookie sheet transfers way too much heat. Well, it also makes it uneven. Uh, basically, everything bad happens when you bake the Scopey on a cookie sheet. There's another thing to consider. Every single oven is different. When we got a new oven here, I had to basically relearn how to ideally bake Sculpey because, again, the I couldn't have it on the same shelf. I think I had to bake it less. The other one, I had to bake it longer. This, uh, this one here, I had to bake it shorter. So every oven is going to be different. And those are some key factors right there, is uh, which kind of Sculpey was it? Was it, uh, you know, so you could do is take that a couple of ceramic tiles or whatever, or, you know, one ceramic tile. Put it on different levels of your oven, because sometimes baking it right in the middle is not necessarily the best spot to bake it. Ah, so TC Minis, yeah, uh, every oven's going to be different. You may find that you need to bake it 18 minutes instead of 20 minutes, maybe only 16 minutes instead of 20 when I use a toaster oven, it's very much different than when I'm using just a regular oven. All right, so I think you could see now we're bringing out a little bit of our couple, just a little couple of tiny little highlights here. Nothing big, nothing dramatic. Just a little something to show that maybe there's uh, some light hitting these guys. It also really makes your DACA holes look a little bit uh, more recessed, Hello, doesn't it? Little harmon, spark my ganja. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, ready to roll. Hello, little hobbits. Where's all the ganja? Where'd the ganja go? There was tons of ganja out here last night. Oh, my gosh. Ganoff was going absolutely berserk because there was a... Uh, 
There were tons of ferns and plants out here. Yeah, look at look at all that ganja right there. Gandalf is very upset and he doesn't see any more of his ganja. Uh, let's see, the Celtic, runic, and wood planks. Ooh, I've got the Celtic here somewhere. Ah, boy. I've got the Celtic texture. Ah, I, is this uh? I think that's the Celtic roller, right? Absolutely love that one. That is sensational. I haven't. I got to re-roll some of that. Literally down to my last few little bits of it. Now here, I think I will let this get a little bit more of a uh, edge highlight on it because, well, this is pretty fresh, right? This hasn't been uh, aged, so to speak. This has just been broken away. Here, let's uh, not be using this one for something like that. Let's uh, use one of these other guys for that. Ah, here we are. Now, of course, the, the def copter is going to be right on top of some of this, so you're just not going to see it all that well. It's actually one reason why I don't mind letting this get a little bit lighter here just so you can actually maybe see it. Uh, Landrast, yes, that is... Uh, actually, Landrast, think of it like a 3D print, right? It comes out until it's cured. It's kind of rubbery, especially if it uh, you're using the hot water trick. But then as it cures, it, it gets really hard and solid. That's kind of the process that happens with Sculpey. You just have to kind of let it uh, cool down and then sort of uh, harden by itself. So yeah, that's uh, think of it almost like a, a 3D print. Ah, uh, yeah, Greybeards. You know, I'm, I'm definitely... That's another thing I have to start getting really soon here is another toaster oven. Uh, actually, well, the other thing is, conceivably, I could be baking Sculpey. On a, on a long baking uh, basting stream because it only takes about somewhere between 17 to 20 minutes to bake the Sculpey. So I could conceivably roll out the Sculpey, maybe bake it in here. Uh, it would require some more furniture in here, so, and also buying the toaster oven in the first place. So we'll, we'll have to wait till we get the funds for that, but hopefully maybe we'll have ourselves a toaster oven that we can access in here. So I'm just going to lighten these guys up so that they look like they're separated from the main wall here. I might throw a couple of more lights on, on this as well too, but first I want to make sure that these rocks or rubble pieces are standing out. So again, for folks that are new here, typically on Thursday we're either sculpting or we're basing. And this this Thursday, we just happen to be doing more basing. There's just so many figures between the 3D prints, the Lord of the Rings stuff, and everything else that need to be based. And this was really fun doing this. Lad. I did just had an absolute blast, literally, making blasted concrete. And it was pretty insanely easy when you see just how easy it was to carve all this Sculpey and do all this stuff. You'll just uh, really want to give it a try yourself. I'm going to try maybe yeah, a little bit more here with these guys and perhaps even tighten up some of these lines. These are basically a bunch of cylinders, right? So we need to have these bands of horizontal shading here. How's about we come back with just a smidge of our lighter yellow in a couple of spots here. I guess too we also want them to have a little bit of a singed look because you know that that can't hurt. That's better. All right we could also after this dries we could take some weathering powders and almost kind of accentuate the the dustiness of that too. It's another option for us. Hey Stompy. Nice to see you again. Ah, boy, Stumpy, it's been a while. I hope that you're doing okay. I'm just going to throw a little bit more. And we'll just do that again as a pin line here. 
this is it's so difficult to get acrylic paint to sink down into an area like that boy and on here with the oils it's just so so much easier I think of how many times I've had to paint over and over and over again on something like this with the acrylics and of course the oils they're more durable in the end a whole lot cheaper than acrylic paints and they are massively more uh, just way brighter intense uh, just when you, you compare them to acrylic paints acrylic paints look like they're washed out it looks like your miniature has been sitting in the sun for 10 years compared to something that's painted with the oils it's shocking we, we have examples of that here we'll get we'll show those we show every usually a couple times every stream we'll kind of demonstrate just how amazing it is to see the oils versus the acrylics as far as the results Uh, so, uh, Stumpy, the uh, the 3D printing side of things has really just, uh, that's really taken off, which has been fantastic. There is another printer that is headed this way. I keep forgetting to look at the uh, tracking number on the, I think it's oh, FedEx. Yeah, so there's a FedEx package that's coming here with that. So see, now we're getting a little bit of a, not just lighter tone, but it's got a little bit of blue in there. But Landris, it's kind of crazy how much difference the basing can make, right? Because I've seen, I, I was looking through for def copters and stuff, and all I saw was the usual, just like flower tufts and, and such on a flying base. And I thought, wow, that's uh, maybe just because not many people use def copters, I don't know why there was just such a uh, a dearth of interesting looking bases for def Coptas, or even painted ones for that matter i might find just a couple of yeah let's do a couple of lighter things here on this and again this is a essentially a plaster cast here from green stuff world uh it's, it's two parts and you can see again you can see me using this last night in the basing stream but if you want to see any of the previous episodes they're all saved like highlights so thank goodness twitch has no idea that there's a loophole like that that you can literally save every single session as if it were a youtube channel you see we, we broke up our highlight line along there Let's try and catch a couple of these blades. I might even see if I can zoom. I think I can't. Yes, I can zoom in. One more for you. There you go. Now I can see it even a bit better. And we'll do the same on here. Just take a couple of these blades here. So with the oils, uh, less is more. Right? Look at how little paint is on that brush. And not you don't see me throwing a whole bunch of liquid on there either, right? Uh, now you ha you kind of have to do that with acrylics to get it to flow, right? Well, you don't have to do that with the oils, and well, not anywhere near as much. Oh, look at this coffee nerdy beer, folks! Be sure to give coffee nerdy beer a follow. Coffee nerdy beer, how you been doing? Been seeing uh, some of your latest things up on Instagram, so looking fabulous as always. Uh, let's see. Uh, Grumdy wants an orc army now. Boy, Grumdy, uh, well, there's plenty of orcs here. And they're all pretty much ready to go because I was actually going to do an entire orc army. They were supposed to basically be kind of the opposition to my sister's a battle army. So I guess we'll just have to uh, do more orky stuff. Uh, somehow we're going to have to create some 32 mil bases, though, because, uh, well, they're kind of spoken for. So we'll have to see what we can do to get some extra 32 mil bases for them, because I'm pretty sure they all go on 32 mil bases. Uh, 
so Valfera again this is for an orc defcopter right here so this is uh, the base that we made last night and this is you know for weeks I've been talking about those orc defcopters that have been in the house somewhere and I was actually moving stuff to do a home repair and quite unexpectedly found them in that area that was not where I thought they were going to be I thought they were going to be in another spot entirely so I was very glad to find those there uh, coffee nerdy beer hopefully some of the the things that we like to talk about with the oils right find a figure that is somewhat simpler so something like this has a big old cloak maybe something like a reaper bones figure and keep the colors simple maybe just one light color one dark color and nothing else that's it just try a couple of colors especially if it's your first time using the oils and then of course you know about the pre-glaze stuff and then just like here right where we are using barely any paint less is more more is way too much yeah, it's not like acrylics where that little bit of paint that i just grabbed as i bring it over here with with acrylics it's dry in the second you put it on the brush well here guess what that ain't happening because i could basically come back here tomorrow and be able to clean out that brush and like nothing ever happened Uh, yep, Abadu, these are all from the uh, the Assault on Black Reach box. Or No, I, was, uh, I thought it was Battle for McRage. I think that's what it was. Wasn't that it? Battle for McRage? Or one of those two. I think that one came before. Or no, it came after. So, yes, this is all oil paints here. So you've got the usual opaque alley up here, right? This is our quick dry white. you got your Chamomile Light, Chamomile Deep, Terra Rosa here, uh, Fanchon Red over here. These are pretty much the standards here. Van Dyke Brown, Indigo, Umber, and your. this is now the Black Spinel. This is the Perlene Black. Haven't used that yet. This is the Indian Yellow. We'll be getting to that. Asphaltum over here. Prussian Blue over there. And to lighten this up just a smidge more. Uh, not Haunt Guts. Uh, uh, actually... The, the last oil painting class of any kind that I had, uh, or, you know, whatever, any kind of uh, instructional thing, sadly, was back in the, ooh, it was back in the before times. It was way back in the day. Way, way back in the day. So, yeah, the, uh, so, Dave, it's it's all about the reflections. It really is, oh, wait a minute, we haven't played with this yet. Yes, let's play with our Let's play with our Perlene Black, a.k.a. Super Dark Green. Super Dark Green. So again, folks, I know that this looks awful messy, but uh, Book of Wapple says things have to be messy before they can be neat. And let me see if I can find one of those for you. I think it is... Is it in the 40s here? I don't know. Oh, well, we definitely have to respect the umber... We definitely have to think less, do more. Uh, oh, diorama bases. We have diorama bases. Ah, there it is. Things must be messy. It's chapter 37. Things must be messy before they can be neat. As we welcome in Talls. How are you doing, Talls? Nice to see you back. It's been a little while. I hope that you've been doing well. Here, yeah, let's uh, pop in a little bit more of our ooh, umber. We're going to respect the umber. We just put some umber in there. Just chucked in a little bit of umber right there. Here, let's go with uh, some indigo here on this stuff. Just because. Uh, tall, it's been really, it's been a really super, super busy week. Super busy week. We're looking forward to getting the new printer here so that we can do some fun stuff with that. Ah, uh, but it haunts, uh, ah, uh, see, uplifted, uh, why do you think I'm not, why do you think I don't have to sleep here? Because I rob sleep, I literally rob sleep from other people. That's why I never have to sleep myself, because I take your sleep. That's it. I'm, I, I steal your sleep in the night. Uh, I think we're all caught up. So, yeah, Hawk gets, uh, let's see, so the, uh, 
Honkut, uh, actually, we do have a chapter in the Book of Wapo that says uh, there shall be no gratuitous brushstrokes because uh, that's, uh, I, I don't know if you ever heard the story back when uh, I was doing my watercolor class and everything else is back when we were at the academy. We had exercises where you counted, you had 400 brushstrokes to do an entire watercolor painting. And I'd be counting the brushstrokes for somebody, and I'd say, uh, you have painted a tiny portion of your image, and you realize you've used 120 brushstrokes already. And then they would count mine, and I would pretty much cover the entire surface with mostly one brushstroke. And it was a little bit like uh, Lord of the Rings, right, with Gimli. And I just look at him, and that counts as one. And by the time I was done, I usually had leftover brushstrokes that I could sell to other people. I'd be like, uh, ten dollars a brushstroke, twenty dollars a brushstroke. Who needs extra brushstrokes? Yeah, that uh, they didn't like that very much. All right, so now here we're going to treat this thing a little bit differently, except for this part right here. Just gonna some of those darker colors in there. Don't care what, just something. Good enough. Remember our makeup sponges right here? Ah, okay. Ah, that's good, Hot Good. I'm I'm glad that there's a correlation there between oh look at this. And that that looked all just like a big old mass of dark paint, right? Well guess what? See his arms have a little bit of green in there. And the more of this we take away, and we could leave this on here maybe a little bit longer even, just to let more of that uh, soak in. But <laughs> there's some folks that might just say, wait a minute, that's all I got to do? They might just like it like this. I mean, there's seriously some folks that need to paint up an army fast, and if it's all grim, dark, or whatever, like orcs, they might just say, huh, that's all I have to do, huh? slap a bunch of different darker colors on and then wipe them away with a sponge and I get that much okay yeah could always come back later and add more can always do that it's gonna keep grabbing more of these sponges here grabbing some more of these sponges wiping some of this stuff away like so Stick that sponge down there. I know, uh, so Landrest, I think uh, Stila has been using, uh, she's been putting the sponge on the end of uh, some kind of a little tool or whatever, right? And uh, I think maybe on the end of a Q-tip or something and pushing that down into some of the recesses, which was a nifty idea. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> so Valfera, yes, that's... Uh, the proverbial uh, watch guy, right? They just have a whole bunch of brush strokes to sell. Yeah. yeah let's just uh, keep uh, wiping some of this away here. And it starts to look like a little something already. Looks a little like something here. Here, we'll just uh, wipe away some of the rest of this and let's get another smaller sponge to get in here like you do so that little bit of indigo out there gives that just a hint of a blue right little hint of a blue there and the more we wipe of this uh more we wipe away this stuff the well less paint is on there the faster it's going to dry which uh, and it just because the oils are dry doesn't mean that the wet blending experience is over either. You could still potentially do some more. Uh, Alpha Gigi wants to do some pink oryx. Well, I would advise painting them with oils because oils, well, you want bright, intense colors. And we can show you here. Now let's uh, do the comparison. And you can actually watch both of these on the YouTube channel. So this is what we did on a YouTube Live. This is acrylics. This is the brightest, most intense pigment and acrylic colors you can find. That's even fluorescent paint on the base there. Then along come the oils. 
look, look at the purple compared to it's just this is uh it's un there's no fluorescent paint down here but look at how intense that is compared to this so it's and i think we also have oh yeah here's another little example right here so this really shows look at the darks that i could make this darker with the oils i can actually go darker with that that's as dark as i could get the acrylics couldn't get them any darker than that look at the different look at the intensity of the that's fluorescent green that's just regular green paint with the oils and then look at the crisp look at the difference in the contrast of the of the freehand there it's unbelievable and this freehand way easier than this so you, this was my stream anniversary here you can watch this just a couple of weeks ago gee whiz was it even a couple of weeks ago i think it was just a couple of tuesdays ago yeah let's uh grab some more of our sponges here all right so you can see we got all kinds of hints of different colors here i think yeah i think we got some hints of different colors now let's uh wipe some of this away same as we did before oh hey lamanas lamanas how are you doing and uh yeah i think i was able to get as many of those uh copied as i or downloaded as i could I uh, just uh I just kind of blindly loaded them. I don't know quite which one is which, but uh well we'll find out. So this is that Indian yellow. Look at how intense it now it's super translucent. I'll tell you that right now. It is massively translucent. It's it's so weird. It's a it's such a strong tinting color and we're just gonna let some of that other paint work its way in here. So again, we're gonna here. Let's uh, have you out there as well, so people maybe can get an idea of what the heck it is we're trying to do here. Uh, let's see. So, uh, so Talls, I hope that everything's been going good for you, and uh, Lamaness, hope that you're doing good too. So yeah, Lamaness, the uh, I don't know. At some point next week, I'm pretty sure is when the then the uh, Sonic arrives here. So that's going to be very interesting. See what happens with that. We thought we were busy before. Oh my gosh, now things really get busy. So more of the Indian yellow here. Because we want to just, uh, I don't know, I thought it would be a fun, interesting exercise to tack on to our latest. Uh, so that's pretty much how we started out with this cloak. We actually started out with the lighter colors and then went darker from there. Oh, let's see, Hawk Goods took their dog for a hike. And, ah, Hawk Goods has the sticks and branches. Ah, Hawk Goods, uh, nothing replicates nature better than nature, and you can't beat the price, can you? You can't Hello, beat that price. Hobbits. Spark my ganja. Uh, thank you so much, Loki 3D Art. Thank you. Uh, speaking of some 3D sculpting potentially there. Hello, little hobbits. Spark, spark my gunja. What manner of foul beast is this? It's like, dude, man, get out of the way. <laughs> man, I hear that guy really smells, but and he's uh, he's got like a lot of weird friends too. He's got lots of weird friends, and uh, of course, everyone says, dude, tell me about it, man. He's always crashing at my place. He's bringing these little short guys around. What you mean, like grots? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yes, Elrond, the dourest elf in all of Middle-earth, because he has to deal with Gandalf. Yes, Gandalf and his ganja all the time. Uh, Punexpected painting insists that it is Thalo yellow. Uh, Punexpected, I think, you know what it is? I think it's Prussian yellow. I think it's Prussian yellow. I mean, look at where it is. It's right here next to only something like Prussian yellow would be brave enough to sit right next to Prussian blue, right? If only a Prussian can be near another Prussian, well, and survive. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, 
Ah, yeah, let's get some more of that yellow out here, too. It's really weird, too, how it interacts with other colors. Almost uh, acts a bit of it as a paint remover. If I can find the... Uh, oh, here we go. This was part of that video. So check this out. So this, look, at, look at how translucent the Indian yellow is. But then look at how it tints other colors. That's Fanchon Red, Terra Rosa, Umber right there. I think that is... Uh, I think that's Prussian blue. Yeah, that's Prussian blue right there. And then this is our pearling black. And then look at this, how it we took fluorescent orange, mixed it with white, and then actually brought it back with the Indian yellow. That was pretty crazy stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, of course, you knew Elron was going to make an appearance. Just like, you know, I don't know, maybe at some point uh, Guajir probably makes an appearance too. So we're just going to hit some of this with our, e I almost called it, I almost called it Egyptian Violet. Because Egyptian Violet, another one of those colors that just has all kinds of oomph, doesn't it? All right. Here, let's, uh, let's throw a little bit more of that yellow out here. And you see we let it be nice and dirty as it mixes. Speaking of mixing, let's go back to our dry brushiness. Like so. Even less paint. Less is more, right? Less is more. But you can see how it's mixing with what's there already. we come back here. we got to get some fresh paint. Uh, so Valfera, we'll get to Prinkles as soon as we can. This is uh, this is also for us tax season too. So let's just say there's a lot of other things that we have to work on in addition to the videos, and that's uh, that's something I've been really trying to do here is get a lot of the videos shot because the first couple weeks of May is going to be very tricksy to negotiate to say the least. There we go. So see, we can even you can see a little bit. Well, almost looks like rust underneath there. All that is is literally just dry brushing some of this lighter color over the top. But because we change the color so many times, right? It's uh, it's like we get all these bonus colors out of it here. There was Van Dyke Brown in here. There was some of our even some of the S. Fultum in there. Keep going with it. And this is nowhere near the lightest color that we're going to do. We can certainly go lighter than this. We're also going to try and get some nice uh, skin tones on him there. I think we might go, yeah, let's let's use the pearling black and see if we can't almost give him like a, almost like a black orky type skin tone there. Yeah, Belfira, uh, you'll you'll know as soon as we can get uh, Prinkles going there. That will probably be a uh, conversion video for the Patreon page for May. That's the other reason I was trying to save him for the conversion corner episodes. Here we go. All right, so uh, let's get a little bit of the light down in here too. So thanks to Git Lamines for the uh, for the files that is much appreciated. Those should, especially the large scale ones, really looking forward to those. So it works so well. It just uh, has th there's what three different Indian yellows. Now do they? The question is, if they have three different Indian yellows, why do they not have Prussian yellow? If they're going to do that, why do they not have Prussian yellow? My goodness. All right, let's see if we can't do some, maybe some leather stuff here. How's about uh, some asphaltum? And we're just going to do some glazy things here on his uh, flying helmet. And then we'll just let that sit there. Notice we're just kind of tapping that on, not painting it on so much as just tapping it. 
on there. And I think, yeah, that also could use some paint right there. Now let's see if we can maybe take our S Fultum here and uh, see if we can do a little bit of rust in a couple of areas here. Well, sort of the darker type of rust that we did at the start of this right here. So let's uh, set you over there. Yeah, it's, uh, how in the world do they not actually have a, wow, it's just uh, most unfortunate right there. Yeah, Valfera will have to, uh, will definitely have to paint up uh, Twinkles on stream for sure. Now this again, this is our darker rust color, so it's more of the asphaltum than it is the terra rosa. And in this case, we're actually putting a decent amount of thinner on there because we wanted to do the whole capillary action thing, right? Even around some of those rivets there. Hey, Bitron, how are you doing? Yeah, Valfira, it's, uh, I thought there was going to be a little bit more similarity with the oil paints, but, uh, I guess it kind of makes sense, right? Uh, if yours, if your stuff is exactly like Gamlin or exactly like Windsor Newton or exactly like, uh, whatever paint brands, why would somebody buy yours if it's just the same thing? So maybe that's why. Because I've been trying to figure, okay, why why all the massive differences? And that's uh, all I can figure. Is that for whatever reason, they just figure, yeah, nobody's going to buy our stuff unless it's all very different. Ah, Vitron, so I printed out the uh, 72 mil dark Galadriel from the printing goes ever on. That was... Uh, it was gigantic. It was a solid hunk of resin, but it was worth it. I think it's going to make a very fun, uh, I might just do it as a painting video even. Here, I'm going to hit this too, same as the other bits. There we go. All right, that's, it's kind of acting also as a little bit of extra shading. We'll probably do some kind of a fun little you know, whatever on the nose cones of our missiles here, rockets, whatever they are. Uh, Orcsuologist, it's, uh, there's been a couple, I swear, there was one company, their pigment, if you just looked at the pigment numbers, their ultramarine blue was the exact same as another company's Thalo blue. And of course, we know we don't trust pigment numbers because they're tricksy and false. They are very tricksy and very false. They will lead you astray. I've seen so many people just get confused and frustrated by those things. I say, how many times have we said you can sort of look at those as an entertaining, you can just look at them as maybe a bit of a reference as to maybe what you might expect but you can't use that as any kind of a definitive judgment as to what you actually have in there. Because one company has the exact same pigment numbers for asphaltum as uh, the other one does for Van Dyke Brown. And those two colors, because I've used them both, and they look nothing like each other. Uh, so Bitron, actually it's a 72 mil, it's the entire figure, but he also has a bust of Galadriel too, so that's really cool. I don't think he's done busts before, um, right, in none of the previous chapters. I don't think he's had busts. So that's really extra cool. All right, so we've, we're have we starting to get some of our little pre-weathering in here. Nothing super crazy, just a little bit here. Here, let's uh, just get these guys with some little smidge of our rusty color there. I 
like so. Now, where's our wings? There they are. Or our, uh, our, our blades here. Our whirly blades. Oh gosh, am I gonna am I gonna actually have to make that stupid dwarf uh, catapult thing, and then have to try and read that stupid twirly whirlies rule? Oh my gosh, I'm not looking forward to that. Okay, let's, let's get some uh, darker colors going on with this now. I'm just gonna do it semi glazy here. It's got a little bit of indigo in there. A little smidge of indigo. Doesn't need much. The rest of that's mostly just going to be a more of a rust color there. And we'll just fill out our uh, rest of our metal over here. Again, the uh, letting the glaze do its thing. Oh, let's see. The only way to get all the colors is to get all the paints from all the producers. That's about it, Valfera. I it, it I don't know. Is there like a secret double conspiracy with big acrylic there or something like that? I don't know. You think there is? Ah, uh -huh, Bitran's been working hard on that 15 mil project. Well, I do wish you uh, lots of fun with that project. I'm sure it will be. Uh, let me see. Uh, actually, uh, Alpha, I have done pink and bright blue orcs. Now, this is long ago. This was with the acrylics, not with the oil paints. Uh, actually, it was a Blood Bowl team that Kathy and I did together. I think they were called the Orchids. And, uh, yeah, actually, you can see those. They're on the blog. You just look at the, uh, on the blog, you check out the Blood Bowl miniature section, and you'll see those. But, uh, now, <clears throat> well, actually, this has some, some fairly bright pinks on it right here. I think we painted that one up on the Twitch channel. But as far as, uh, well, lighter pinks, I mean, you got things like, uh, Fanchion Red, you hit that with your white, that could also be good. And then, well, even something like a Perlene Red, and then you've got some of your magentas, like a Quinacrino Magenta could do it too. Let's see if I can find that. Or a Lizarin Crimson. Yeah, so something like a Lizarin Crimson with some white in it, that's going to give you a substantial pink. But then, like I said too, that uh, Quinacrino Magenta. So we're just going to let that also sit there for a bit. Whoops. This is what I'm looking for here. Ah, there's Stila. Uh, uplifted tape. Well, the asphaltum is it's the one true weathering color. Well, but then that would uh that would upset uh, Terra Rosa, I think. So asphaltum. Well, it's Drax Faultum, of course, right? Because it's Drax's fault that we use it in the first place. It's all Drax's fault. That's the first thing. We have to blame Drax for that, don't we? All right. Let's see if I can get some fun skin tones on him here. Oh, something like this, maybe. That was just a little bit of our cadmium mixed with a little bit of our perline. And we'll let that also mix with some of our pre-glaze there. So Stila, how are you doing? And folks, be sure to give Stila Rebel a follow because Stila also uses the oils. So Stila, how did your OnlyFans stream go? Because uh, you did that right after your regular stream. Uh, if you got that up on Instagram or whatever, uh, feel free to uh, pop that into the chat there so that people can see. Uh, let's see, do you have a storage solution for all the oil paints? Uh, Grumdy, uh, well, for me, I can't store things like uh, regular folks do because I have to have them within arm's reach of me. So yeah, there's no, they're just sitting there in a on a shelf in a uh, on a drawer here, or just sitting in a drawer because literally I have to be able to take those out at a moment's notice. So yeah, it's uh, 
it's not going to be anything like it is for you normal folks um, at all. <laughs> It'll be quite different, to say the least. All right, I'm going to take a, the lighter colors here. And this is uh, another reason also why the oils are a wee bit faster because, well, don't have to worry about uh, layers. Hashtag no layers, not with the oils. And look at that. Right here. Again, using that same stippling motion, right? We all of a sudden have a lighter green right here. Yet it is uh, got some blending going on, doesn't it? I just took a few seconds. Just a couple of seconds there. Oh, it's, oh you freehanded some Latin on this. I know you were wanting to do some freehand on that ribbon. I'm glad that all worked out well for you. Uh, e tool, actually, yeah, go back and watch. This might have been three weeks ago. No, actually, it's more like. Uh, no, it was longer than that. It was maybe like four or five weeks ago. Go back to a Saturday session. Uh, it was, uh, I was painting calf stuff. And actually, that was 10 millimeter. I painted all that with the oils. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter if it's 15 millimeter, 200 millimeter terrain. I don't care. The approach is actually going to all be the same. It's uh, not going to be any different. It would. Pr it's going to get some kind of pre-glaze. All of the principles are all the same. Doesn't matter what it is. I don't approach busts any differently. So like this one right here, we didn't approach her any differently than we are approaching this. The colors may be different, but we approach that the same as we also you know, would approach something like our Jeeves and Worcester here. Again, no different than what we're doing here. Again, the colors might be different and create a few different situations, but overall, the the concept is the same. Ah, oh, thanks, works. So those are really fun. Hey, Nessie, how you doing? So, folks, be sure to give Nessie a follow. Nessie, how you been doing? Ah, oh, boy, Nessie, you didn't get to see the base ink. Look at this. We used uh, we used these supports from a 3D print as a rebar and stuff. That was really fun. That was a that was a blast. Uh, so Nessie, I hope that you're uh, having some fun still with. Uh, are you still doing some of the Sigmarines, or have you moved uh, back to say Song of Ice and Fire or something like that from the Sigmarines? All right, now let's see if we can get some lighter stuff here with our Indian yellow, and that's uh, why it's interesting to think of Indian yellow potentially as a substitute for. Uh, for your cadmiums, because now we'll just get a little bit of white into this. And it suddenly becomes uh, quite opaque. Uh, like that. Look at that. Oh, wait. It also has some streaks on it now. How did that happen? Where's that blending brush again? There you are. Let's make sure that we have our green taken out of there. Ah, tall, thanks. Uh, a couple of people had asked about that. The, hey, did you, you ever think about using the supports as for something like that? And I just I saved some. I actually cured some. But like I was telling Mad Dave, I'm I'm actually going to have to make one of those bigger curing stations, not for the miniatures, but so that I can cure all of the supports. So uh, yeah, that uh, that's kind of fun, isn't it? Every Imperial Fist player in the universe just weeps when they see things like this. So this is the same Indian yellow that we used here. Same Indian yellow. It's uh, really fun. Ah, uh, so doing a... Uh, now, actually, gee whiz, do you have more, a second or a third Gundam underway? I thought maybe you had a second Gundam. Okay, so that was the second one. All right, that makes more sense. I was wondering, was, wait a minute. I thought that one was done. So here was our blending brush again. Blending brush. And we're going to do the same thing here as we did before. Look at this. 
using the color that's already there. Why not do that? Makes life a little bit easier, doesn't it? And then we can do all of our chipping and rusting and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, and then it says, like Steel says, more freehand, more better, just like more DACA, more better. Freehand is like DACA. You can never have too much of it. It's kind of funny painting this. Remember we had one of those CAV vehicles that had, it was the, uh, oh, we painted it, well, it was like an A-10 Warthog that we painted with the uh, early war Dauntless color scheme on it. That was very fun. So here's that same stippling motion. To get some mixing there. Look at that versus that. So he had a little bit of the lighter opaque white to it. So yeah, oh, a little bit of Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, well, I know my next uh, army painting series, that is going to be for the... Uh, yeah, let's get some more light yellow on her. That's going to be our 3D printed dwarves there. Let's see, we just did the, the 40K. We did, just had a Song of Ice and Fire one. So I think I'm going to try and... Might try to do another War Cry one for Series 26. Might do the Shadow Stalkers. So that way we can do the, the basing tutorial for them. Now here, I'm actually just going to let that streak here. Same this way. So you, hopefully you can see this. Yeah. Got to take some of that excess paint off of there. Let's do the same over here too. A little bit of streaking there. Let's get some of our yellow down here. A little bit. Not too much. Oh, where's our blending brush? There you are. Just has to be a soft brush and uh, obviously no paint on it. Works a whole lot better when there's no paint on there. Uh, let's add JS Twitch. How are you doing? So the uh, the cab area is called the Suseki. Boy, why does that sound? That just sounds so familiar. But thanks for the info, JS. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't think I've posted any Instagram pics of that yet. I don't think so. Maybe I have. I don't think so. Not yet. We'll, we'll do a little Insta post on those. And now let's maybe start to bring out some brighter yellows here. So I can uh, think of all you Imperial Fist players who would love to be able to do this kind of stuff. Ah, nice and easy like this. Oh, thanks, E-Tool. And folks, be sure to check out Armored Wolf's Etsy page for all of those magnificent dice bags. There's a bunch of folks here in chat that have some of those dice bags, and they are works of art. I just saw Armored Wolf's latest, uh, latest magnificent dice bags, and they are truly works of art. So you got to go check those out. Ah, there we look at this. I mean, this is it's so. This is why it's just been declared illegal in many states because it's too darn easy. Look at how easy this is. Let's do some streaking over here. Maybe we'll let a little bit of the lighter yellow get back here. Yeah, for all those folks that say, oh man, you know, yellow doesn't cover anything. Well, maybe in acrylics it doesn't. In oils, clearly it does. Look at look at how strong this yellow is here. That's some intense stuff, huh? Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. So we're just again getting some lighter yellows in a couple of places here. Let's do it on this little wing here. 
And then again, we could do all the, the chipping and, and such on there too. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have me some fun here. I'm just gonna go with some yellow stripes here maybe. Just because, don't know why, I'm just gonna do that. And can we and we actually can see some of his pants over here. So we'll just uh, again give this suggestion of the stripes in there. Let's see if we can do a little bit of a lighter skin tone stuff before we start putting some other colors into the shadow areas here. Let's get a little bit of that purling green into this. Yeah, still, isn't it crazy how you can just literally freehand yellow over other colors? Especially the the Imperial Fists folks, oh, and having painted as a commission thing an entire apocalypse-sized Imperial Fist army back in the old days of not oils. Yeah. Big difference. Big difference. Here, let's uh get this arm the same way. So I think we're I think we're all set there on the chat. I apologize if I ever fall behind. What's weird is it's actually easier for me to fall behind on the basing streams, mostly because I'm trying to desperately keep track of what the heck is going on. I got glue all over my hands and such. So yeah, it's uh, almost a little bit easier on the painting streams than the basing stream. Now let's get some other colors here into those shadow areas. And what better than Egyptian violet to do something like that? Where are you at? You're around here somewhere hiding. There you are. Nope, that's Prussian blue. There you are. Egyptian violet. We'll just uh, chuck you right over there. And then we're going to put a bit of a red there. Yes, we are going to, for the dark greens of our flesh tone, we're going to use purple here. It's only natural. It's only natural that we do something like that. Not kidding. And you notice again, there's not a whole bunch of paint on that brush, right? We're just essentially kind of dry brushing this down into these crevices here. Why? Because we want some different skin tones on here. Darker and darker and darker shades of green. That's going to be awful boring looking. Just saying. So I'll catch you later, Velfera. <clears throat> so we'll see you tomorrow. Like I said, we'll probably be painting for sure the uh, one of the tree beards at least. And then we have to kind of keep going on our all of our Lord of the Rings stuff, we'll be working on those as well. So hopefully we get to see you tomorrow. Ah, so I'll you use a little bit of the Indian yellow ink. Yeah, this is just, uh, this is pretty crazy, right? And there was a lot, there was weathering on those Imperial Fists that I did back in the day. You can just uh, see them on the blog. I think we're going to get a couple of our, a uh, couple of different colors here for some wires too, I think. Let's do that. Yeah, maybe we get some uh, Prussian blue for some of these wires and such and cables. Here, we'll just uh, keep going with some of our darks here. When in doubt, make things darker, right? It's in the Book of Wapple. When in doubt, make stuff darker. And sometimes we can come back in with some lights here when we know we have a whole bunch of darks already established there. How's about we give him some chompers here? 
Uh, oh, you know, maybe a little bit more of the Terrorosa for that. He's got plenty of Teefs. He's got some Teefs there. More, yeah. We'll get those a little bit lighter, too. Then we're going to have to come in here with some of our mid-tones on the metals and such. And then we'll be doing some chipping there. We also want to do some fun things with uh, the nose cones and stuff on some of these missiles. Ah, Grumdy, boy, how many times have you heard me say here, I look back at the old projects and I just keep thinking, man, I could have had two-thirds of my life back if I just had the oils when I was working on that stupid thing. Uh, like the, the big old mechanic, uh, the, all of that Mechanicum stuff, oh my gosh, or Adeptus Mechanicus, whatever the heck it's called. Adeptus Torturus, that was more like it. Torturous Maximus, I think that's what it was. That was... When I think back to how much less time it would have taken to paint all that, and it would have... The result would have been better, too. That's It's not just less time. Would have been a better result, too. Now here, I can actually just kind of be painting this lighter color into these darks because it's just kind of uh, tinting them at this point. See, how, look how it's mixing all that time with those uh, darker colors there. Now, let's see what happens when we take this, mix it with our indigo, and we start to get some lighter colors here on some of these uh, metal surfaces. Now, we'll be using our blending brush on this. All I'm trying to do is just uh, throw these guys out there so that we can do stuff with them. Uh, so, Wicked Elf, uh, sorry that we kept you up later last night. I, that, had, that had to be kind of weird. You're like, okay, why all of a sudden are there orders happening at, like, midnight? What's going on here? What just happened? Uh, why is that? Because we were using the fabulous Wicked Elf full, uh, vellum plants on all of our Mears miniatures, lizard men, that's why. Little blending brush action here. I guess, uh, what the heck, I'll just throw a little bit of a uh, lighter green on his fingers here too. Let's just, uh, I know that's not terribly interesting right there, but let's do that. Because he's got the uh, chopped off gloves there. Now I'm going to maybe try and do a little bit more of our uh, magenta stuff here. Let's grab a little bit of the white. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. That kind of crazy violet color. Ah, and Grumdy's looking forward to using those. Yep, so Grumdy uh, has a supply of them now. And they're really nice. I just, uh, and I love the vellum butterflies. I just wish I still had those miniatures around. Sadly, I do not. But uh, I think you can actually check out the Instagram, look for some of the, some of the Dark Sword figures. We use the vellum butterflies on a couple of those. They, they are really amazing. Very easy to use, and you get some paint on those things. They really do look amazing. And they they look, they look, will look like tiny miniature butterflies. So again, we're getting some of our... A little bit of our... Kind of a purplish gray in there. Ah uh, yes, Dila. Well, we're uh, we got our our pro our uh, rotors on here now. We're just trying to get some more rusty things going on down here as well. So we did that the top side of our rotors. Now we're gonna have to get some of the underside there. Ah, uh, let's see. Where's uh? We'll just go ahead and. 
grab some of our Terra Rosa here. Turn this upside down. Let's get some of our lighter rust color in here, shall we? Letting it do its uh, pin line wash type stuff there. Here we go. Ah, Drax, how are you doing? So, folks, speaking of somebody else you need to follow, you got to give Drax a follow. So, Drax, yeah, we based this uh, last night. Did a Sculpey base with it. Uh, and that's a, a resin. No, it's, sorry, that's a plaster cast, actually, from Green Stuff World. And then these are supports for a 3D printed miniature. And we're doing the Def Cop. Uh, so you're saying you can't get these anymore? They were only ever in the... Uh, was it the Battle for McRage box set? I think it was, wasn't it? Uh, or or was it Assault on Black Reach? All right, Lady Hussar, thank you so much for hanging out as long as you could. And hopefully we see it tomorrow. It's an earlier start tomorrow. So somewhere between 4 and 4.30 typically is when we get started. Uh, so it was okay. So Black Reach. Now, are these still part of the orc list, even? Or, or well, codex. I'm just going to call it a codex. I, I don't know if it's only Sigmar that calls them tomes or battle tomes or whatever. I'm just going to call it a codex. Sorry, they're codexes and army books. That's me being old and cranky. Yes, indeed. I get to be crotchety. Ah, Grey Wolf, how you doing? Yeah, well, one of the things for sure we will be painting is uh, don't be hasty, because we need this character, right? Don't be hasty, little hobbits. Give the oils time to set. Don't be hasty. Ah, people are going to rue the day that we painted Treebeard here. Ah, they... We call them Grog Darts. Yes, indeed. That's uh, that's what Rich calls a couple of the older folks that he uh, games with. Well, obviously doing historical games. And he definitely, he grogs them, that's for sure. Oh, without a doubt. Yes, indeed. So Drax, I hope everything's going good. So Drax typically streams Sunday through Wednesdays in the later evening hours. So that's when you can catch Drax. And uh, Drax has been doing a whole bunch of the Cursed City stuff. Uh, Drax, you'll be. Are you going to be working on that for a while, or is even that going to? Are you going to need a little bit of a uh, palate cleanser here and there from the Cursed City stuff? Ah, uh, Grey Wolf. Uh, so we'll be. That's the that's the GW version. We'll be painting that one tomorrow. For sure. Uh, I think I'm gonna save the Loot Studio one. I might even just do a tutorial on that. But uh, we also we need to get some more of our Dun Landings painted, right? Because we want to set Rohan on fire. Yeah, burn it all down, baby. Ah, so around one third, yeah, Drax. Uh, that was ah, uh, I really loved that one. That was so much fun painting that one. Ah, uh, now the one that uh, I wish people and I'm gonna have to find it. Uh, I don't think it's on the blog, but it it was more of a car almost more of a cartoon style painting. But it's a uh, it's a uh, obviously you're looking at Minbar. And you see a very, very displeased, uh, let's see, it was the military cast, the warrior cast, and the religious cast are looking really, really upset. And Dolin is looking very embarrassed. And you got Sheridan. He's wearing what looks like a Burger King crown. And he has a bag in his hand that says Meal of Joy. And, of course, you see a giant M in amongst all of the 
kind of crystalline structures of minbar. And uh, it's called McFlarns. Yeah, I did that. Had to do something like that. You know, you know that had to happen. Oh, yeah, so we did a couple of uh, armored wolves uh, suggested uh, checkerboards on the one of the props from or one of the uh, blades from the rotors there. So we did that. Um, so the uh, the Wicked Elf, I love the Loot Studio stuff. Uh, we just did a video, and boy, that was a lot of fun. We just did this one right here. So I filmed this one. Uh, this is going to be uploading right after we're done here. Got a chance to do the wood grain on there. I uh, got some of their busts. Those are going to be fantastic. And we've got, I think I've already got four of their busts printed out. Yeah, at least four of them. And we got this one. We got the Medusa bust printed out already. So that's been great. And there's uh, their 72 mil stuff is fantastic as well. Like that uh, that nymph right there. You've got the dryad or the dryad. Then you've got the water. Uh, which mode? Then you also have the 75 millimeter Medusa, and the nice thing is that they're all hollowed, and they really work well. And they have these fabulous uh, basing elements right here. Let me see if I can grab one of these guys here. Yeah, tons of things like this that we've been using now on some of our miniatures, and I printed these out at three different sizes or something like that. So I got, I think, two different types of torches. Really fantastic stuff. I mean, just what don't what don't we sell here? I, uh, is that uh, is that a bit? Ah, uh, it's Gray Wolf Studio. Thank you so much. Cause I could use a little bit of a drink of this right now. Thank you so much. And I've got to actually. Oh, uh, so does anybody else have the arch villain? Uh, Prints because I have. That's the other thing I've got to try and get uh, some build plates made of the most recent arch villain. I still have to sign up for. Oh, what the heck? Why have I all of a sudden spaced on it? I still have to sign up for Lost Kingdoms because I don't want to miss out on their uh, April Tomb Kings. Don't want to miss out on that. So I think, yeah, we're just going to get some nice little darks in here, I think. Same thing on our checkerboard there. Ooh, let's get some, just some dark over there. What the heck? It'll be easier to figure out what the heck we're looking at. I want to simplify that. Now we'll come back in with something like a... Here's our indigo mixed with our white. That's going to be a little bit more. Can you actually see that? It's kind of blocked by the rotor. Sorry about that. Ah, Lady B, how you doing? Ah, Grumney has a ton of arch villain. Ah, oops, Sarge. There's there's the bits, Krieg. So is it the usual AP or no? It's a HE, right? You're going HE instead of AP, right, Sarge? I think so. Uh, let me see. So that's uh yeah. Let's get a little bit more of this in here. I just uh. I was trying to see what was going on with the chat there. Just uh, don't mind my pause. Oh, gosh. Uh, nope, not there, but maybe here. And I'm not making that as a teeth. No, no, no teeth. I don't care. Not after all that creature caster stuff. No teeths. Looks like Grey Wolf wants to participate in a wee bit of a Bitskrieg. We don't have a lot of supplies left for a bit's creek, but we don't care. We don't care. 
So here's a little bit of a look see again at the so you got I think there's three different sizes of this plant. Then you have this fern, they also have the smaller ferns. Here you can see the smaller ferns right there. And then there's I think three different sizes of these leaves. At least three. There might be a fourth. Ah, so Sarge is going with the heat. Sarge is, Sarge is bringing the heat as always. Yeah, that's what Sarge does. Sarge brings the heat. Again, dry brush. Here, look at this. You think I'm kidding? That's very much a dry brush right there. And any brush can be a dry brush too. What the heck? Even a little quadruple zero here. Because when they get more beat up, I don't really care anymore. So thank you very much for all the bitses. I appreciate that. That's a, well. That's a, that's what's gonna go into the uh, getting the Lost Kingdoms files. But the arch villain, so Laminess, uh are some of the big critters. Like let's say this month's release with the the big spider things and stuff. Is that designed to still be printed out on just a, or do you need a Saturn or a Mighty to be able to print out some of their big critters? I guess that's the one question I always have about some of the, because uh, it seems like there's a few that you can't print those out on on a regular Elegoo or something like that. Because I'm sure you have printed way more of those than I have. Is that Grey Wolf? Now that's do. Oh, we have a. Sometimes it takes three to tango. There we go. Thank you so much, Deuce. That's appreciated. Yeah, I haven't even. All I've done is download them. So I have not. Uh, I don't know if they just have straight up Chidu box files. Or if you have to just do your usual building the, of the build plate. Well, well, I guess that's why they call it a build plate, because you build things on it. Who would have thought? I'm shocked. I never would have thought that. No, that's because, well, pfft. things like brain activities don't happen much around here. No, just like we did on the top side, we're going to bring in a little bit of our indigo gray here. Yes, indigo gray, that's what we'll call it. Uh, I, I Grumdy, thank you very much, Grumdy. That's a that's a quad factor right there. Not the quad factor of Doom either. But oh, oh my goodness, I do think. Well, there. Well, use the last drop there. The last drop is gone, which means we're gonna have to go this way. It's like, oh, good grief! It's like, hey, those teeths are mine. Not 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 teeths. So we'll just have to, uh, we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way, the puppet show style. Yeah, we haven't done the Wapilius puppet show in a while. All right, that's, uh, that's cool. You know, Lamines, the Diwali, their dragon, what was kind of nice is that all you do is you just uh, load up the Chidu box, and it'll just drop all the pieces on the build plate for you. You don't have to try and rotate them and do all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of sweet. I don't. I wonder if Arch Villain also does that. Probably not. It might just be. <laughs> maybe it's just a false hope. But oh, that was kind of nice when I saw that. I was like, oh man, I don't actually have to build that. Like 14 different build plates there. They kind of did all that work. Now, of course, Diwali has way fewer files in a release than Archvillain does. Ah, well, that would be nice. That, well, that would save a ton of time. Also, and save some lost parts. Because I know with the mini Monster Mayhem, there's been a few times where I've gone, oh, man, okay. So I still have a couple of parts that have to get printed out yet. Because sometimes it can be hard to tell which wing or which part of the body you got going on. I mean, which is fine. Which is fine. I 
if I want to be able to print it out on that small printer, it's going to have to be in, like you say, in build plates. All right. Uh, oh, can't get a resupply of ammo. And it's back to work. The, the, get into the chopper. Gandalf, get into the chopper. <laughs> so we're going to have to call this guy Arnold. Ooh, let's get a little bit of reflected light on these bits here. And then let's do something there, too. Yeah, that needs... It's a little something more than what we've got. Yep, uh, same thing here. Maybe some more. I'd like to almost get some more lights on his helmet here, if we can. Uh, as long as I don't have to do supports on it. Oh, that's, oh, gosh. Yeah, Laminesi, well, you know, for me, that would be... Unfortunately, a bit of a deal breaker there. Just no time for supports. I mean, I wish I could because it it could maybe open up some more thingiverse style STLs that maybe I just kind of go eh, and I just won't bother with those because I just don't have time to do the supports on them. Uh, you know, I'm going to keep going with the Terra Rosa over here, mixed with our white, almost kind of a skin tone color there for his gloves. Yeah. And then fortunately, we don't have any, well, that was just acrylic stuff there so that we can actually maybe try and glue this bugger onto this thing. Hey, microtonal Matt. Oh, Wagnold Schwagzenazer. Wagnold Schwagzenazer. Well, that is uh, that is a mouthful for me, but... Uh, <laughs> Wagnold, Wagnold. Yeah, so we'll, we'll have to see if I can say that. That's, uh, if I can actually say that without uh, breaking terms of service, but I ended up saying, up, saying something else instead. Uh, especially on those, uh, ooh, can you imagine that on one of our 11, 10, 11 hour Saturday streams or something like that? That's a TOS violation just waiting to happen. That could go sideways in a hurry. Oh, uh, what the heck? We'll get a little of this, uh, on the knuckles of his gloves too. Let's just lighten that up a little more, shall we? That's uh, the Arnold Chopper. Well, there's there's plenty of DACA on this thing. There's plenty of DACA. You can never have too much DACA. So yeah, you can't you can't have these in an orc army anymore, can you? I, I, well, actually, I don't understand why you wouldn't be able to. It's not like GW doesn't uh, you know have stuff in a Codex or a battle tome that uh, doesn't exist, like Lord of the Rings. Or, oh, wait a minute! Did I did I mention that? The fact that like a third of the range is never available. Oh wait, that's why they invented 3D printing. Ah uh, yes, that that's right, Grumdy. You you got it right. They will. They will take advantage of that. They will take it anything that they can do to keep us from having our fun. That's what they're going to do. All right, so that's... Uh, I'm going to see if I can't maybe get just a bit lighter here on the bottom part of that. So, Sarge, you have a good one, and thanks so much for the bitses, as always. And we're just going to start blending that out a little. There we go. Okay, that's. I uh, just need a little extra hit there. Might even take some of the indigo here to darken that more. And then, of course, this. We are going to see if we can't make this more of a circular form here 
Yeah, there we go. So instead of just having the one dot there, see we have kind of a circle that goes around like so. And you know, I'm gonna actually just throw some more of our blue over here. Not so much because I want it lighter, or whatever. That's the a little bit of the color contrast we're talking about here. So I'm gonna actually throw more Prussian blue in there. A little bit more over here too. Yeah, so actually if we do a quick little uh one of these guys, zoink. Yeah. So there's no value difference there, but there's a color difference. And that's how we're just popping that little extra bit of contrast. Yeah, a little bit of extra contrast. Sneaking that in there. Being so sneaky. Very sneaky. Ah, boy, Gray Wolf. Okay, so think of all of this kind of weathering and all how easy it was to do all the metals and such here, especially with all of this junk. Look at all this stuff. Think of how easy it was to do that. <laughs> and let's go look at these guys because these predated the oils by this might this might have drove me to the oils yes <laughs> we'll say that these guys drove me to do the oils because look at those reds and all the golds that that whole thing it would have taken less than half the time and it would have looked not just the same look at checkerboards yes fanchon red here's looking at you lots of indian yellow so look at all that weathering and stuff and I don't mean just weathering with the oils. I mean painting the whole thing with the oils, just like we were doing with this guy. Because these pictures here, this doesn't show everything. This is maybe half the army. There's a, There was a titan that went with this, and not one of those little dinky foot-tall titans. This was one of those big ones. So yeah, all of these crazy robot guys and everything. Oh, and then there was this. Yeah. That is seriously about six, seven pounds of, no, more like 10 pounds of resin because that ray gun was like five pounds by itself. And each of those wheeled mechanisms, the tracks, that's ho hollow on the inside. Oh, look, there's also a telescope. Look at the guy on the back of an open cockpit. I think there was at least three of those stupid uh, plasma cannons, and each one of those was articulated. The whole vehicle was articulated. That ray gun went up and down. Uh, with the oils, it would have looked so much better. It would have looked better. It would have taken far less time. Ah, that's it's it's painful to look back at those. It can be very painful to look back and go, I could have had so much of my life back if I had the oils then. Oh, wow, we ended that just in time because M. Tellies would have missed out on his Who Enters My Domain. M. Tellies, welcome back. So, folks, be sure to follow M. Tellies. So, M. Tellies, uh, were you still doing your uh, unveiling of the of the cards there? Or were you doing more of a uh, back to more of a painty type stream there? Uh, Mott, how are you doing there? So, M. Tilly's, yes, thank you so much for that raid. And I uh, hope that you had some fun. Well, let's, uh, let's get a little bit of our lighter blue in here if we can, maybe. Ah, uh -huh, so you did some more cards. So, again, folks, be sure to give M. Tilly's a follow. Uh, where, where's Landrast? Where is Land Landrast has to give you the greeting, too. So, M. Telly, thank you so much for that raid. Now, uh, is the, the card unveiling, are you always kind of getting new supplies, so you're always going to be able to do more unveilings and stuff? Or uh, is there a point where you're like, okay, well, we'll have to unveil a different game. That's because uh, I know what Kathy was doing, <laughs> talk about old-timey, the garbage pail kids or garbage pat kids or whatever for a while and I think all those packs are now opened up. Ah, so it's never ending. Ah, so is MetaZoo. Ah, with a little uh, Digimon and some magic. And that that's why that's why Mott's uh, wallet is going to end and Mott's wallet is going to end. 
not the cards. The cards will never end, but Mott's wallet will end. It will be kaput, and there will be no more wallet. Well, there will be a wallet. It'll just be empty. It'll just be empty. Now, let's bring in a little bit of a, just like we've done before, a little dark along that edge right there, and we'll do the same. We're going to do a little bit of a cleanup here, more about brush stroke management than it is actually any kind of color mixing going on. Same thing over here. Just going to throw in a couple of darks over here, too. What's going on with this thing? Not sure what we exactly want over there. I'll just make sure that, uh, yeah, this could use a little something here. And this is going to be the blind blending, right? We're just going to take some of this lighter color here. I don't even know if you can see it, but I, I know there's something happening there. Why? Because there's darker paint on here now. So I can't really see what the heck is going on, but I know it's being mixed. That would be virtually impossible to do with the acrylics. And this is the nice thing again about the oils. There's a lot less of the subassembly stuff you got to do because you can reach into those, well, ordinarily almost impossible to reach areas. See, that's a little too light there. We'll take some of our, you know, this is our darker kind of indigo gray right there. Yeah. Bit more into here now. This is, uh, again, more of a brush stroke management. There's just some, there's some, there's some brush strokes on the loose. We're going to corral those. We're going to corral up those brush strokes like so. Yeah. Now there's a, a couple of weird elements right here that we're just going to see if I can't throw in a couple of more lights right over here. Well, almost more of a bluish gray right there. Just uh, so it's not all just dark and rusted. Same over here on Hello, the... Hello, little hobbit. Spark my ganja. On a couple of the skids and ganja. Is gan ganja. David, how are you doing? Hello, little hobbits. Oh, my goodness. Spark my ganja. It's like, yep, dude. You trying to hop on here? Missile to the face. <laughs> because he's got enough DACA. And then, of course, well, here's going to say... Oh, wow. Hey, can I borrow some of those next time he tries jumping on me? Like, yeah, sure, dude. No problem. Oh, this is going to be great. So thanks again for that follow. Yes. <laughs> oh, Mithras. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did that, didn't we? Oh, my goodness. Well, wait, wait, what do you expect when it's, what is it, uh, come for the painting, but stay for the puppet shows? Ugh, that's, that's bound to happen. When that's part of your mission statement, that's going to happen. And now that I've seen somebody actually try to paint Sauron of many colors, now we definitely have to do that here. Although it was kind of fun when we had just the primed Saruman, remember that? And uh, I think he was primed gray or something like that. He looked gray. So Gandalf was tormenting him, just calling him Saruman the Gray. Oh, that was, uh, that was not very, that wasn't nice by Gandalf there. <laughs> They're still a little bit, a little hashtag only in Wappleville. I suppose that might be uh that might be like a federal law or something like that. That that sort of insanity only happens here. I don't know. I mean, why wouldn't you want it? But I suppose I don't know. Here, let's. Uh, oh, wow, that's interesting. A little bit of the black and the uh, terra rosa and white together. That's going to be interesting grayish pink right there for whatever uh, I guess that's supposed to be held together yeah I guess that's what that's supposed to do 
Well, all right. Okay, I'm all right with that. Uh, Electron, have you done any grimdark style loyalist space marine similar to this you're painting now? Uh, Electron, actually, if you check out the blog, I painted entire apocalypse sized, I believe it or not, Imperial Fists. Yes, that's why this is so darn familiar. Imperial Fists. So we'll do a little bit of a film noir for Bithron in just a second here. I'm just trying to uh, get this area here before I forget about it. We'll do this one over on this side too. We'll do this on this. But then we'll have both of our... Let's set them up this away. There we go. You can see both of them. Especially watch what happens here when we take away the color. Watch what happens here. Well, actually, and I, on the def copter too. So color goes bye bye. No warm versus or no uh, bright color versus gray color. No warm versus cool. And no yellow. Look, ma, no yellow. Look at that. It's weird, right? You take away all that yellow. So the other colors, the yellow is no no lighter than the other colors. However. It's also warmer and more intense because all of a sudden, bam, where's your eye drawn? It wasn't drawn to these areas in film noir, was it? No, not so much. Ah, uh, that's okay as to head off to bed. So that's okay. That's okay because uh, you can join us tomorrow, right? Hopefully so. Uh, we're going to be painting up at least, well, we're going to paint up one of the tree beards. I think we'll go with the official tree beard. Oh my god, that's going to be crazy. That is going to be absolute madness and mayhem. Don't be hasty, little hobbits. You... Oh, people will rue the day that we painted Treebeard here on the channel, and now we have him as a character. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Well, then Sauron too. Pretty much anything we paint here, people will rue the day that it becomes a character. Ah, so Deuce, uh, you got yourself uh, a new Bits Farm? Is that a new Bits Farm for you right there? A Bits Farm? We all need a Bits Farm, right? More Bits Farm, more better. Okay, yeah, this is, uh, we need this to be, first we're just going to kind of clean things up here. So we're just going to take this. Get things cleaned up here a little bit. That's better. Ah, Grey Wolf Studio, thank you so much. Wait, uh, wait. He's like, hello. Wait. I'm no. I'm not Gandalf. He's weak, right? Yeah, man, he smells bad. Um, You smell kind of funny, too. Hey, wait, wait, what? Wait a second. It's like, hey, hey. It's, it's, it, I blame the little guy. Oh, sure, always blame the goblins. <laughs> uh, wow. Yep, that happened too. Oh, uh, let's see, find a 54 mil winged hussar. <laughs> well, probably is the oily. There we go. Uh, it's the, it's, I think it might have something to do with the chocolate covered raisins. I don't know. It could be. So yeah, do uh, go ahead and send me a link to that. Uh, I definitely, I wonder, if there has to be somebody doing uh, STL files of winged hussars. There must be winged hussar files somewhere. Because they're winged hussars, for crying out loud. Who doesn't want winged hussars? Well, <laughs> I suppose if you're an Ottoman... Uh, Janissary or something like that outside of Vienna sometime in mid-December. You probably aren't that interested in winged hussars, but otherwise, yes. Ah, though, I'm glad, Grumdy, because uh, now, of course, are we going to have to add Arnold or Wagnold? <laughs> that's uh, that's going to be tough for me to say. I would love to be able to say that, but... Uh, that is just too tough for me to vocalize. I would if I could. 
So there's a bicycle chain here. <laughs> Look at this guy. What the heck is that? That's like a bicycle chain. All right, back to a couple of more edges here. Let's uh, bring up this edge just a smidge there. This one too. And uh, oh yeah, we got a little pipe over there again. Do some blendings over here. Cut that down a smidge. There we go. It's the uh, nah. We're gonna do something like that instead. Oh, Wicked Elf has a 75 mil winged hussar. Well, let's see if you don't mind. Did you print your tree beard? So this is other tree beard. Um, this is Shmee beard because <laughs> we have Shmando. <laughs> this is Shmee beard. This is from Loot Studios. Now I did. I think I was worried about him fitting on the build plate or whatever. So, like being too tall, I shouldn't have worried about that because I think I've actually printed taller things than this. So this is the GW tree beard. And there is the Loot Studios tree beard. So obviously, well, the beard's a little bit longer here, but this took two and a half hours to put together. Uh, this, I just pulled off the supports in about five minutes. So there's that difference. And again, that's from Loot Studios. I think they call him Tree Ent. Shmee beard, yes. <laughs> As if we don't have enough characters here already. Oh my goodness. And all I can think of is It's a Wonderful Life. Oh my gosh. It's a line that has been replicated in Wappleville many times. When Nick the bartender slams down his fist and he goes, Look, uh, let's see. Yeah, he says, That's uh, I've had enough of you two. Out with you two pixies. Out you go through the door, out the window. Yes. Nick the bartender. I guess if I do any kind of a uh, bar keep or whatever, a tavern keep, we're going to have to call him Nick. So I think Loot Studios probably has like a, doesn't have a whole tavern type of a thing. I know that Printing Goes Ever On has a tavern keeper, but I know that guy has a name or whatever, but... Uh, Actually, does Artisan Guild have a tavern? They must have a tavern keeper. So we'll have to print up an Artisan Guild one and call him Nick. And we'll have to put a towel on his arm. Uh, so we have the Loop Studios one printed. Um, maybe, yeah, that was the 32 for sure. Yeah, because their 32 mil stuff is pretty small. So that was their 32. Definitely not the 75 mil. Unless the 75 mil comes in a whole bunch of pieces. Bithron, we're going to need a, gosh, we're going to need a whole, like a roster here. We're going to need an entire roster just to, uh, we're going to need some opening credits. We're going to have to run some opening credits here just so that all the characters are listed there. Uh, so yeah, Grey Wolf, it has... Uh, I think what I did, that's in the welcome pack. I think that's, oh, that's the other thing I also have to transfer to my other machine is the welcome pack stuff, which somehow never got on to the original uh, transfer drive. Yeah, offbeat, that 75's got to be gigantic. But that's the 32, because, again, all of their 32s are pretty small. Actually, nah. I thought I had the Olympus Rider up here, but no, that's a uh, that is downstairs waiting to get primed, and that's pretty small. That is pretty tiny. So actually, if I was going to be printing up their 32 mil stuff for games, which is like makes look uh, Lord of the Rings stuff look gigantic, yeah, I would definitely have to print it bigger, for sure, no doubt. Oh, let's see the old or oh, the new GW Bellacore with all the techniques you've been using on the wing miniatures. So Electron, yeah, that's uh, I think oh the Ryder uh, Ryder thought it was a Balrog, didn't he? And I was I was getting massively confused. I'm like, what do you mean a new Balrog? 
Now, is he the new uh, the new demon prince, or because they also have those uh, two new Slanishi uh, demons there, right? I think that's the other. So, uh, so Bellicor, he's got to be what the new demon prince. Uh, so it's the Treant. Yeah, offbeat. I definitely have to print the Olympus Rider in 75. Now, I don't know how many build plates that's going to be. I'm assuming that I'm probably going to have to do, like, one plate with the wings, one with the horsey, and maybe even a third one with the rider, which means, obviously, multitasking and throwing a whole bunch of other stuff, like the torches. So, yeah, literally on all of my Loot Studio stuff, all of their basing elements, I have about five different sizes worth that I just shove on the build plates to, to tack out or to fill out the extra space. Ah, uh, let's see. Francois and Pierre, they're definitely... Actually, I've got those miniatures still. Um, somewhere I have... Uh, Francois is around here somewhere. Oh, I think so. Yeah, there's a... There, there he is. Right there. Uh, so we'll have, to, we'll have to go find Pierre so that we can have the two of them. Arguing about wines. That's what they're going to be doing. They will be arguing about wines. Uh, it's a reboot from an older one. Uh, Electron, the, the nice thing I like about the 3D printed stuff, and oh my gosh, where's the hands demon? Where is that one? I think I have that one up here somewhere. Let me see if I can find him. Because he, ah, here it is. Here it is. Look at these two. And I could print these up bigger, I guess, if I wanted to, but no assembly required. No assembly required, baby. Look at all that. Look at all those hands and everything. No assembly required. Absolutely love it. This is fantastic. Look at this thing. So these are from Mini Monster Mayhem right here. And there's a... Well, let's see. They might have taken 13, 12 hours to print, but I didn't have to be there while they were printing. So, hey, <laughs> Uncle Grabby, oh my gosh, that's... Uh, Uncle Grabby, that's... Uh, he, I'm, I'm not sure if that's a character we can show too often on Twitch right there, Uncle Grabby. So, yeah, there's... Uh, it was two... They look... Well, they look kind of like the original Goat Slanish Demon that came out a couple years ago, right? We've seen a lot of people painting that one. These two kind of look like they're uh, related to that. Of course, we could put some of Landrast's uh, Lost Kingdom's wings on there and uh, make him fly. It, it's just, just a little creepy, right, Grey Wolf Studio? Just a little creepy. Yeah, of course, there's one guy who's not afraid of him, and that's Don Mateo. Don Mateo does not fear anybody. Well, because he's Don Mateo, of course. I wonder if anybody... I might have to just sculpt a Don Mateo figure. I might just have to sculpt me a Don Mateo figure. And, of course, only Steele and I will have any idea who the heck he is. But that's all right. All right, there's a... I wish they didn't add these things on here, but uh, is what it is. And no, not going to paint that up like a teef or a toof. Don't care. We're done with toofs and teefs. We don't want any more of those. We, we've, we've done those already. By the thousands. Ah, see, ah, steal it. That's who's going to save us from big acrylic. Don Mateo will save us from big acrylics. Yes. There's, uh, there's not much big acrylic can do against Don Mateo. 
I mean, the guy can rip apart an apple with his bare hands. Come on. Like he's going to be afraid of big acrylic. Yeah, uh, we're building Don Mateo awareness. Yes, that's it. One stream at a time. Spreading awareness for Don Mateo. It starts very small, and then it just builds. It builds, and then Don Mateo is everywhere. Oh, gee whiz. Uh, yeah, sadly, Tom Bombadil... Yeah, he, uh, even Tom Bombadil pales in comparison to Don Mateo. Yeah, Don Mateo could just make Tom Bombadil disappear. He could literally just uh, ride his bicycle around Middle Earth. He could grab that ring from Tom Bombadil. The War of the Ring would take about five minutes with Don Mateo. I mean, he would just grab the ring, just make all the orcs go away. And just chuck the ring into Mount Doom. It'll all be over in like five minutes. Because he's Don Mateo. And again, absolutely nobody knows who the heck that is. Which a part of me enjoys very much. Oh, Grey Wolf Studio, sorry. Uh, even, yeah, John Wick. Uh, oh, let's see. Bruce Lee, even uh, Chuck Norris, yeah, they all bow to Don Mateo. Don Mateo is tougher than all of them combined. <laughs> and then make paste for everybody. Uh, boy, steal it. Uh, you know what? Oh, that's the that's what I have to do. I have to grab those DVDs because I have 12 seasons of Don Mateo on DVD. That I knew there was something. I'm like, wait a minute. I have something on DVD that I could be playing in the background. Yes. Well, you don't just play Don Mateo in the background, of course. Uh, unfortunately, Electron, uh, throw in Action Jackson, uh, throw them all in there. Don Mateo would just kind of, uh, basically, they'd all just like sit down at a table and just, uh, yeah, they would, Don Mateo would be unopposed. He's too powerful for all of them. Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, that basically nobody in the universe has a chance against Don Mateo. He's just he's way too tough for everybody. Now we're doing the same thing. We're going to try and uh, get our edge set up here. Ah, uh, look at that. It was just a little bit of dark there. Also has a little bit of blue in it. So now looks like we got an edge there. Here we have a whole lot of nothing. So let's get a something lighter here. Uh, Electron, that's just it. Don Mateo doesn't fight at all. Don Mateo does not fight. He doesn't need to. He basically can just look at you, and that's about all he needs to do. And then you just uh, you just melt, and you ask for forgiveness, and you confess, and then you happily go off to jail. That's uh, that's what Don Mateo does. He is the ultimate crime fighter. And yeah, we'll throw a couple more lights right here. Uh, just like Grumdy said, he all he has to do is just be there. Actually, I think uh, I think even some of the, I think Sister Mary could probably beat up uh, most of the folks in Middle Earth. Sister Mary would just uh, put Lurts in a headlock, and it'll be all over in seconds. And of course, Natalina. Oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, Natalina would just—I mean, she could take out an entire army of orcs just by herself. Good grief. So again, a couple of more. Find a couple more lights here. <laughs> ah, but he does more than solve crimes, right? 
I mean, he like rebuilds cities with just his eye. You can just like, yeah, he could stop a volcano just by looking at it. I mean, how do you think the town of Gubbio has stayed safe for the last 30 years? It's because of Don Mateo. And he literally does have the stare. Because when, when he stares at you and the music plays, you got no you got no shot. You have no shot. When when he stares at you and the music plays, it's all over. You're done. Give it up. You're going to jail. As we find there's a couple of little extra highlights here on some of our well, we don't want to say the shiny stuff, but we're also gonna come back in here. Like we've done in a couple of the areas, right? We're going to throw some dark up there. Same over here. Do we need... Uh, yeah, we're going to throw some right over here on the uh, skids. Yeah, I mean, Don Mateo is just... Uh, actually, somebody did do a video. Like a hilarious video of him... <laughs> literally riding around on a motorcycle or something like that and just taking guys out. Of course, he rides a bicycle. But in this uh, parody, he was uh, riding on a motorcycle. I'll just pop that edge just slightly more. There we go. I know what, maybe throw some more dark in the boots there. This glove, of course, mold line running right all through this stuff. So, yeah, we had to sacrifice some shape there because of mold lines. Oh, that's it. Steal it. Yes, that's it. Gubbio is definitely the Gotham of Italy. There's uh, quite a bit of crime that happens there for a tiny mountain village. I guess that well maybe it's not quite that far. No, it is. It's on the mountainous side. It's on the east side of uh Yeah, it's on the Adriatic side of Italy, right? Well, you got the spine of Italy, it's gonna be on the Adriatic side of the spine, I believe. I think even Perugia is closer to the spine of Italy than Gubbio is. Oh, he was he's never canceled. He's never canceled. He's just he's just on a mission. That's all. He just he just went on a mission. That's all he did. He'll be back. Don Mateo is always back, literally. Remember the there was one episode where I guess he gets flown back to the town in a helicopter. Yeah, I think it was there was an episode like that. Alright, we've got a we haven't done much here. This is just original pre-glaze right here. How's about we solidify that? Yeah, that's better. I uh, see Perugia is more, and Gubbio is more towards the edge. Okay, I thought so. And Stila, is it completely, absolutely insane and wrong that I should know those things? I suppose it is. I don't think so. So I got more, more of the dark area. I don't have much of a choice here. I don't want to have too much interest drawn over that way. So this is the black, oh, perline black. Perline black right over here. Maybe some darks under there too. Now we'll have to, we might have to make some adjustments to this when we see it on the base which should be very interesting <laughs> no one born after 2000 that's <laughs> all right well great well, thanks for hanging out uh what is it that's 12 41 it's almost one o'clock in the morning isn't it Uh, let's see. So it, it's, uh, yeah, Stila, I'm um, trying to think how many, 
I think there was 17 seasons or something like that. So even with 12 seasons, I don't think we have the entire run of the show. I don't think we do. And I'm going to see if I can't. Well, you can't really see it, so there's no point in me messing around with that. But I'm just going to try and get a little bit of a uh, speedometer here or something. I don't know if he really needs an odometer. I think he can pretty much tell where he is. It was a surprising long run of the show because I think they went through about 12 police chiefs. And what's crazy is that unlike the British TV shows where they, for them a season is like a half hour of shows, it's like, oh, there's a season. Half hour of shows, that's a whole season. With the with the, the Mateo, they were they were like twenty five episodes per season. That was also crazy. All right, so yeah, that's uh, that's the Italian or the uh, sorry the Italian the Indian yellow. That is uh, some crazy stuff, and it didn't take much. Look at this tiny little bit that's out here. It's like it's like Indian yellow is the Dama tail of yellows. There we go. I like that. It's the Don Mateo of yellows. Oh, uh, yeah, let's throw out a little bit more of that. This is again the Indian yellow mixed with a little bit of a just our white there. We're gonna lighten up some of these rotors in a couple places. Then here, we're gonna see if we can't. Finally solidify some of these uh, checkers right here. Because remember we wanted to leave them? Don't be hasty. Little hobbits is. This is just what we did on our Wapelius spell brush. Same thing. We went back in later. And we were able to clean up all of that because with the with the oils you can get the brush literally smaller. Well, much smaller than you can with the acrylics, no doubt. Like uh, Steela, you were finding your freehand wasn't too difficult, right? On your on your OnlyFans stream when you're doing the uh, the Latin on your uh, artisan guild. Was that the uh, Requiem Brotherhood? That's it, Requiem Brotherhood. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Uh, Abenfell, I think Prussian blue is uh, it's a bit too aggressive. It's a bit too aggressive. Uh, Terra Rosa just can do anything. Uh, Prussian blue just tries to conquer everything. So yeah, uh, Prussian blue is just uh, it tries to conquer absolutely everything. So yeah, Don 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 Matteo wouldn't try to conquer other colors. He would just. Uh, convince them to work with him, which is what Terra Rosa does, right? And Indian Yellow just works with all the... It influences them. It tints them. It influences them, just like Don Mateo does. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Prussian Blue, it's very aggressive because, uh, like, Terra Rosa hasn't wiped out... Uh, it hasn't really wiped out other colors, but Prussian blue wiped out two colors just uh, at a stroke, right? Quite literally. Ah, that's. Uh, I'm glad it did deal because uh, with the acrylics, I guess part of it is because the paint is drying on your brush, right? You got this tiny little dot of paint on your brush. It's drying as soon as you put that thing on there. But with the oils, it's not doing that. So you're just not fighting the paint with the freehand stuff the way you are with the acrylics. Because I noticed when I went back to the acrylics to do that one series of videos on the those Lannister hull, uh, heraldry stuff, I was like, have I forgotten magically suddenly how to do freehand? What the heck is going on? It's because that's how different it is. That is a huge difference. All right. 
I want to even make that just a smidge darker over here. A little bit more. This is the black spinel that we're using. Might even use this as a bit of a blending brush here if we can get the paint out of it. So we're just going to take this paint here, we'll stipple it a little bit, and poof. Now we've got a nice little shape to it there. Let's get a little bit of a light on the edge over here. Maybe the same on the each of these blades there on the choppy things here. The choppa. It's the, it puts the chop in choppa, right? Yeah. Putting the chop in choppa. Let's get the leading edge of this here. All right, now do we have, okay, we do have some super glue here. I might, I might even just get a little bit of green stuff mixed together here because, you know, glue, green stuff, glue can never hurt. So let's just get a little bit of green stuff in case we need that to help uh, make this thing adhere right away. Uh, I know we did it on our fell beast. We did that for sure. Actually, we used a, a decent amount of green stuff there. So we're just going to mix this pretty much 50-50 here. Well, mostly 50-50. If I can get some of that yellow out. There it is. Speaking of yellows, do I just notice that the Holbein Naples yellow is the same pigment as the Cadmium Yellow Pale? What? That's interesting to say the least, for sure. Here, where's the... I seem to have lost all, oh, there it is. My little water spritzer, there we go. So we're just gonna mix ourselves up some green stuff because again, we have to just glue on that thing. He's literally gonna rotate around. We don't want him rotating around. So yeah, I guess, uh, so Terra Rosa and now Indian Yellow are the Don Mateos of their particular color groups, I suppose. All right. I don't know how much of this we're going to need, but let's see if we can free our def copter here. And now we're going to have to get rid of uh, some of our blue tack here. So that stuck pretty well. And then we'll see if we can get them stuck on there, and then we can maybe get some paint onto this. Just gonna pick off what's left of my blue tack there. And then he's gonna go on one of these two holes. Which of the holes was it? Now we might just have to sacrifice some of our uh, paint there to get our finger on that. And I think that's about what we have here. I think that's about it. Or was it the... The one further Hello, up. Oh, little hobbits, spark my gun! Ah, wizardy brush. Thank you so much for that follow. That is appreciated. Ganoff appreciates it too. So I think we'll go with the f the one further up. We'll get you your Ganoff site. There we go. All right. So we are gonna get some of our green stuff here. Whoops. Get back up there. So time for some glue, green stuff, and then some glue again. So there's our glue. Time for some green stuff here, and hopefully this uh, doesn't go everywhere. All right, there's our green stuff. Like so, some more glue. So it was the one that was farther forward here. Now I'm just gonna press that down And then we have to leave them sit there for just a bit. Let the so the green stuff and this glue are going to kind of crystallize together. It gives you more of an instantaneous hold. 
And hello, hello little, little hobbits. hobbits. Spark my gun. This is for Wizardy Brush and Azatoth. Azatoth, how are you? Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. What is that? I really need to get a ride on that thing. Ah, uh, so speaking of yellow, oh, okay. So there we go. Look at that. Oh, thank you, Armored Wolf. Uh, well, oh, no, we, we don't have anything. We have one tiny little drop. There's one last little drop left. Thank you so much for that. And again, if you want to see how the base was created, that's just last night's stream.